गुड आफ्टरनून सो वी हैव Well, so it's now 2 p.m. So um, good afternoon, and Dr. Uh, Abhishek Bisra, today's uh, speaker, young and energetic scientist. My colleagues, Professor B.I. Sarma, Dr. Uttar Sarkar, and my dear participants, I welcome you all in the fourth day of this workshop. This is our first lecture today. Uh, I welcome you, sir. Mr. Sir, I welcome you formally in the workshop on behalf of the organizing committee. So today, uh, Dr. Abhishek Misra will be delivering a lecture on uh, a practical guide to density functional theory calculations using quantum espresso. So before uh, uh, inviting Dr. Abhishek Misra, I invite my colleague, Dr. Utpal Sarkar, to take over this uh, proceeding for this lecture. He will be moderating the lecture. So, Dr. Sarkar, please proceed. Thank you, Dr. Sula. <clears throat> uh, a very good uh, afternoon to all of you and uh, warm welcome, Dr. Obisek Kumar Misra at the virtual workshop on density functional theory and its application, 2022. Dr. Obisek Misra is working as associate professor at University of Petroleum and Energy Studies, Dehradun. After completing his PhD from University of Lucknow in 2008, he worked as assistant professor at Amity University, Noida, and moved to Texas AM, uh, University, Texas, USA for uh, first postdoc in 2010. He worked as 
EPSRC postdoctoral researcher at University College London from 2013 to 2016 and investigated materials for carbon dioxide capture and conversion. He also worked as a DST fast track young scientist at JNCSR Bangalore from 2010 to 2013 and a postdoc fellow at uh, Baranas Hindu University, Varanasi, in the year 2009. <clears throat> His current research interests are focused on materials modeling and simulations employing DFT based calculations for gas sensing, catalyst for carbon dioxide conversion to chemicals and fuels, 2D nano materials for electronics, etc. He is a recipient of DST Young Scientist Award from Department of Science and Technology, New Delhi, India, and has published over 50 research papers in journals of international repute, including Advanced Functional Materials, Journal of Material Chemistry C, Small, ACS Omega, etc. He is a referee of over 20 international research journals. Dr. Mishra will now talk on a practical guide to density functional theory calculations using quantum espresso. Dr. Mishra, please. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sarkar, for a nice warm welcome, and uh, thanks to Dr. Sukla as well for inviting me uh, in this uh, workshop. Dr. Sukla, am I audible? Okay? Yes, yes, you are audible. Yeah. 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 So, thank you again, the organizing committee. And now let me share my screen. Yeah, so earlier the plan was to give a hands-on on this and uh, we'll try to do as much as we can, but we are not in the face-to-face uh, -face mode where we can go and have a look how participants are doing on their laptops. So rather it, uh, it will be uh, good if I briefly introduce you the basics uh, which you have been already seeing the past three days. Uh, and uh, then I'll show you some applications actually, and uh, we'll come to quantum space after that. So this is the place where I'm working at the moment. It's the uh, foothills of uh, Himalayas, the Dehradun, very beautiful campus. And these are my different uh, uh, applications where I'm using density functional theory uh, at the moment. The first uh, uh, an important area in which I'm working is uh, how you can convert uh, CO2 from the environment and uh, reduce it and convert it into, into fuels. Second is in the collaboration with the University of Kiel at the Germany, where we are working on the metal oxides based uh, gas sensors and tuning their properties, or uh, rather, I should say, we're working towards the uh, selectivity and sensitivity, which is the main challenge in the sensors. And uh, we are uh, using DFT based simulations uh, uh, for investigating the properties and designing new sensors. Third uh, uh, interest or third love, which I will say in this field uh, for me, is uh, working on uh, new 2D materials for various applications for batteries, for solar cells, uh, and uh, yeah, gas sensing as well. So that was the interest I developed when I worked at uh, NCSA with Professor Sienna Rao, where we designed new materials BCN. So we will discuss all these, these things in the next few slides. Uh, these are the different uh, uh, research activities uh, at the moment in my group, uh, where we are investigating multifunctional materials for different applications. We are also, uh, as I said, that uh, are very much into 2D materials based on graphene, a similar kind of graphene, like uh, 2D gallium nitrides uh, and uh, phosphorine. And uh, we are working on uh, environmental and energy problems, uh, CO2 capture and convergence, gas sensor, water purification. And uh, one of the uh, recent interests that I uh, am pursuing is on the target uh, designing. So this is uh, how the outline looks of my 
talk, we'll start by giving a few slides introduction to BFT. Uh, then we will look at uh, very quickly, not into detail, that uh, what are the current uh, hot uh, application areas where you can apply DFT. Uh, where, where, where I should say where I am applying nowadays to DFT and quantum spacing and vast kind of softwares. And then we'll go to the technical details of how quantum espresso uh, a works, uh, where you can download, and uh, uh, we'll set a platform that we'll be using tomorrow for the technical hands-on session, actually. So when we say that uh, we are working on uh, uh, DFT-based simulations on materials, everything, everything is focused on uh, nano we are focusing on the electron atoms and mole, uh, and and their interaction actually and how well we define those interactions depending upon the application is where as a, uh, a dft person uh, you should look at uh, different uh, functional uh, choice of functional plays a crucial role actually but rather if you're a, like a phd student if you're basics i will say it's all about quantum mechanics uh, uh, this might be, uh, uh, I'm not sure, but, uh, but uh, I, I think you have, have seen this kind of history of uh, quantum mechanics. They started in uh, 1928 from the block theorem. And then uh, many similar kind of inventions like uh, Wilson implication of band theory and uh, Fermi surface of the metal was discovered by Bardin in 1935. Uh, BCS theory also plays a very crucial role in this direction. And then con some implementation of her in 1965. So we call them uh, these, uh, we call these uh, methods as first principle methods. And that's the, one of the uh, most uh, powerful uh, uh, thing about these methods. Uh, because uh, you need not to have any, I mean, this is a, uh, a word which is a meaning, which is having meaning from the beginning. So we'll start from the scratch, actually. We will use the basic principle of quantum mechanics, as you might have seen in the few, uh, few lectures of the uh, legendary professor Kiri uh, Shane, that how beautifully you can write uh, uh, and solve uh, sort of the equation, actually. So these are among uh, one of the most accurate simulation technique in the material science at the moment. Uh, there are other methods as well, but this is DFT, the, the best thing about DFT, why we are listening to DFT in this five but is but so because it is one of the most accurate simulation technique. Whatever uh, I mean so there are two different things. One, uh, we don't need any experimental parameter, we can start from the scratch actually. And on the other hand, these are the most accurate simulation techniques. So this is gives you the, like uh, 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 this is the beauty of this uh, this uh, methods. So we just need, as I, I mentioned, on uh, let me use the pointer. So as I mentioned here, we just need some good approximation of the system that uh, what is the system I'm going to work and how that system looks like. That's it. I don't want anything actually from from the, my experimental colleagues at the start. So as I said that there is not only DFT which is being used in the material science, but DFT is one of the most accurate technique. And there are other methods as well. Uh, in the in the chemistry, we uh, work on the Gaussian basis sets. Uh, I mean, basically, we play the basis sets actually. So and then the quantum Monte Carlo tight bonding approaches are also there. So they have their own limitations, uh, like DFT has. But uh, we'll focusing our lecture on the DFT only, as is the theme of this month. So, so what is DFT? If I have to say that it's a uh, uh, I can define in different ways. As the, the in the middle, I said that uh, it's uh, maps and interacting many body problem exactly to a much easier solvable non-interactive problem. And uh, what it is, I mean, uh, so it was uh, uh, it was uh, given by Walter Cohen actually in 1998. Uh, they got the no uh, Nobel Prize as well. Uh, the two main theorems uh, we have seen earlier in the early lectures, uh, constant theorem one and constant theorem second. Uh, so, I mean, Hornbach uh, two theorems, and then we have a constant implementation of DFT. And uh, this is uh, 
uh, not only being used in academics, but industrial research has also been benefited from the DFT. There are many industries, like uh, at the moment, if you look around, uh, IBM Metal Research Center, Cell Global Research at the Bangalore, or in the Amsterdam, and uh, Sabic. So uh, many big uh, industries are working uh, on the DFT-based uh, materials modeling to, to design the products. Uh, so you might have seen such kind of uh, slides earlier as well, but uh, if I have to start, I will start uh, like this, that uh, uh, the main approximation that we should be used in the DFT is this. Uh, is a bond open hammer approximation where we neglect this term because of the uh, uh, high mass of the nuclei and we say that this term have very uh, very uh, less contribution and this this gives us a you know, classical term and then hamiltonian electronic hamiltonian so as i said uh, that uh, we have two main theorems uh, the ground state energy from Schrodinger equation is a unique functional of electron density. So if I, uh, I, I have to calculate the ground state energy, we can work on the densities rather than working on the wave function actually. And uh, second theorem states that uh, the electron density that minimizes the energy of all function is the two electron density. So we will, we will. Uh, when we will work on the quantum espresso, we will see that uh, we are going to just calculate the energies. So energies calculation are uh, enough to extract many properties. So let's define uh, DFT in a very uh, in a, in a, in a uh, cumulative way that uh, it's a quantum mechanical method. Yes, we know that it's based on quantum mechanics, and we use it for solving the ground state electronic Schrodinger equation of molecules and crystal uh, using a formula formalism that is based on charge density rather than wave function. So that's the, uh, I mean, I, I should highlight this actually, that, uh, uh, yeah, it's based on charge density rather than wave function. So this is really very advantageous because uh, wave function is a 3D kind of uh, uh, 3D function. And if you have a, uh, one electron, we have three uh, coordinates where are you looking, and then we have a, n electrons actually in a real system. So working on three n three n coordinates is really impossible if you are going to solve the Schrodinger equation. So this theory gives you a freedom to work on densities rather than the three D wave function, and that reduces the degree of freedom, and uh, uh, hence we can easily solve the Schrodinger equation. Then uh, there are so many approximations actually how we write the exchange correlation function. But uh, two main approximations uh, are the basics. One is the LDA, where we assume that uh, uh, it uses, I mean, it uses the only the local density at that point where we are going to calculate the exchange correlation function. And uh, the second is a GGA actually, which is not only the the local, but it also includes the uh, the gradient of that function as we move inside the system. So it includes the gradient of a density in function. So that uh, we can say that it's not localized at a particular point. So these are the nice things. It's a ab initial formalism where we used to, we can start from the scratch. It's uh, uh, so it's having good predictive power and very accurate in terms of uh, calculating the material properties and we can calculate lots of properties of technological interest and hence this guy got the Nobel Prize in 1998. So we can calculate, so now, now I'm moving towards the calculation actually, what you can calculate, how you can be uh, is in the uh, end actually, but what you can do, so you can calculate so many things, so let me mention few, you can calculate whether you, uh, your molecule, your material is stable or not, so what we do, we calculate the transition states, that how you are going towards the stable configuration. <coughs> and nowadays, um, we uh, we are uh, having advancement in the computational part, so they are becoming less and less uh, uh, 
compute extensive while experiments are becoming more and more costly so this is uh, i mean uh, people can raise a comment here that no the experiments are also becoming easy but uh, still if you compare the cost of doing experiments uh, and uh, cost of what we uh, implement in our computational uh, things uh, really still uh, we are doing the job so uh, they are of course safe and they are easy to perform you can uh, you can go to your uh, uh, holidays and you can access your jobs whether your jobs are running fine or not or you can play with, you, know, you can just uh, look at them and then again you need not to be present at the lab to do that So it's just uh, just uh, it just slides you so you see that how accurate are these techniques. So, so if I calculate the lattice constant of different uh, materials, silicon, uh, carbon, uh, and others, you you will look at the how how well uh, DFT have been able to capture these things, even the bulk modulus as well. So this is uh, actually cold slide. I didn't I didn't. Uh, uh, invest much time in, in, in preparing uh, PPTs, but this is what I found somewhere, and I, I, I just, uh, uh, it's showing that uh, how uh, occurrence of DFT is increasing uh, year by year. So everyone is now uh, using DFT, whether it could be a experimentalist or a computational guy, but DFTs are uh, everywhere actually. Uh, what it can and what it cannot. So, of course, as I said, that uh, constant implementation of the theorem says that uh, energy can calculate the uh, accurate bigger density. So, of course, we can calculate that energy. We can calculate the forces, that is constant, bond length, frequencies. Uh, frequencies will give you the idea of uh, the stability of the system. And then electron density helps to uh, in, helps us to uh, get information regarding the interaction of the molecules. Then we calculate the dielectric responses as well. Now look at the right side the column. It says that I mean many of you, many of you uh, the students will be wondering, oh, it doesn't, uh, it cannot predict the band gap. But I'm seeing so many research papers where people are working on the band gaps calculations in the DFT. Yes, so uh, um, uh, plain DFT cannot uh, predict the good band gap, a good band gap. But what it can predict is the variation of band gaps. So you are having some material for for particular application, say solar cell application or whatever. And then you modified it as a, as a computational engineer. And uh, now, so, so, so if uh, uh, initially I was having some, uh, for example, say 2.1 electron volt, and after the uh, introducing some defects, I have reduced it to 1.5. So there is a change of 0.6 electron volt actually, uh, if uh, I introduce the, the defects. So this change will be very accurate. So you can say that, okay, yes, if I, I can introduce the defect, I will be reducing the band gap of my system by constant electron So that's accurate. But however, the absolute values are many times are not that accurate. But still, I would like to add there are some other implementations, implementation or hybrid functions, they, they predict very close band gap. So yeah, plain DFT is not good for the, uh, the electronic state, I mean, uh, the excited state calculations as well. But again, we have TDFT approach for doing this kind of calculations. Uh, yeah, uh, bond length, uh, uh, there are some accuracies regarding LD and GGA. So that, uh, that you will uh, look at the uh, uh, literature as well that band gap sometimes is about 50% underestimated in some case of LDA. So now, now you can take a look at uh, the few of applications where I am using the DFT and then we'll move to the uh, quantum espresso technical uh, aspects. So one of the uh, main uh, research work, uh, research project I will say that I'm using uh, the DFT is uh, towards the investigate, investigation of uh, uh, a novel catalyst. So novel is uh, the world, people use it quite often. But what novelty uh, we are looking is uh, the cheap and non-toxic. And of course, the main thing is that how 
uh, you can reduce the barrier of conversion of CO2 into fuels. So if you look at this slide, this gives you the uh, again the clear picture. It's a three-step process. You have to capture it, and in the second and third step is the extraction and conversion. So if extraction and conversion uh, into fuels into chemicals is uh, highly uh, expensive. If it requires so much cost and energy, then there's no need of doing such kind of things. So where uh, where we are working, we are trying to reduce this barrier actually in just few uh, amount of energy should be uh, enough for converting CO2 into fuels. Just a glimpse of why we are working on copper oxide from fast to fuels. Like we started actually, so because uh, copper is one of the unique metal which can produce so many hydrocarbons as here as you can see here that is a phenetic yield of copper electrode but what problem is having that uh, when when we place them in the in, uh, I mean open environment they reduce the uh, their uh, reduction uh, activity and uh, hence the they have very limited energetic efficiency so comparatively oxidized coppers are the best better ones and hence we try to look at the copper oxide uh, when we did the the plane DFT calculations, uh, we we got stuck here, as you can see. That uh, th so this is uh, is a, is a crystal structure of copper oxide. However, uh, look at this. Uh, this is uh, dot dot lines is uh, showing the Fermi energy level, and you will see that uh, copper three uh, D states crosses the Fermi level. So that's the problem we are having sometimes when we try to model the uh, transition metals from the plain DFT. It uh, uh, ideally, I mean, it's uh, uh, experimentally it's available that it's a mod insulator and having a gap of about, uh, I mean, there's so many experiments. So, so uh, but one thing is here that it's not a metal. But when we, uh, we uh, use the plain DFT, it's shown to be a metal with no magnetic moment. So that was the issue that we used when we then we go to the next step, which is the Hubbard parameter correction, and that gives you a good result actually. So we'll skip all these things that uh, just showing you that uh, how we used DFT plus U implementation. And uh, yeah, just a quick uh, way to show you that uh, yes, uh, sometimes DFT fails, but uh, you can further improve. And uh, the good thing about, you know, uh, is uh, of uh, quantum espresso is an open source. You can actually contribute to, this, to, to the code as well whenever you see some kind of uh, issues or you, you modify them according to your uh, system. So then we looked at the, actually, uh, so what we have to do is here to, is to uh, design catalytic system and uh, catalytic, uh, when I'm saying the catalytic, catalytic properties, catalytic, uh, these are the surface phenomena. So we are not going to work on uh, bulk, rather I will uh, look at the surfaces, what surfaces it can have. And if you look at the uh, symptom images, what you will find that copper oxide uh, uh, crystals are, uh, looks like this. Uh, uh, in, uh, cubic kind of, uh, I mean, uh, this kind of system. So what we did, we looked at the different uh, planes that can exist in the experiments, uh, low index surfaces. And as you can see, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. So as you can see here, that uh, uh, one, one, one surface can have two terminations, likewise the other surfaces. And look at these numbers. So one thing you will observe here, that this guy, the oxygen terminated one 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 surface is the most is, is having the uh, least formation energy compared to the other faces, and that is being reflected here as well. One one one, which is this plane, this plane, this plane, is the most dominant phase in the morphology. So that gave us an idea that uh, when you are going to synthesize and characterize these materials, uh, you will be mostly getting the one 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 surfaces. However, there will be some edges as well corresponding to different other faces 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. And these are the, I mean, uh, our calculated uh, uh, work function which matches very well with the 
experiments. So you can see that the, uh, this is very applied application, uh, applied uh, kind of uh, uh, research where is still the plain DFT, the basic DFT is doing a very good job. It's just you can see that the, uh, our calculated work function is in the way exactly matches, I would say, with the experiments and our calculated morphology as well. This is just a glimpse that we, when we work, when we design such kind of system, we have to look everything. So what this slides is telling you that, uh, uh, okay, yes, you have to work on computation, uh, computers, you have to design the model, but you have to look all the aspect. You have to look what magnetization it can have. So when I'm saying that what magnetization, it can have different kind of, so what we have as a, as a computational person, what you have to do, you have to look at all possible kind of magnetization that can exist in such kind of surfaces. So you can have a bulk like, you have a layer, like, layer by layer, line by line. So there's so many jobs that you have to do. It's, it's not that they just you press the button and you got the result. So we, we cannot miss any single point. So this is the details of the copper 2 oxide and uh, the calculated morphology of the copper 2. Again, the, it matches very well with the uh, calculated work function. And as you can see that, uh, yeah, these are the band gap. If you look at the band gap of the, of the other surfaces, some are uh, uh, half metallic, some are uh, behaving as a metal and some are the insulators or semiconductors. Then uh, we are talking. We are discussing at the moment uh, the application regarding uh, in the catalysts, uh, catalysis. So what we have to do, we have to place the molecules over the surface, and we have to calculate the binding energy. And that's what we did. So this is this is a busy slide, and not saying that you look at the, all the figures. The only one figure which I am going to highlight, which I even highlighted in the bold, is look at this. We have the binding energy for. Uh, 111 this guy this surface which was the most stable surface so for this most stable surface you look at this in values it's only around minus minus 50 kilojoule per mole so minus sign the good thing that you need not to give extra energy from the outside it's binding automatically however uh, binding energy if i compare with the other uh, surfaces is very low so what information we got from these calculations? So again, I'm saying that everything, everything, uh, any application you're going to work on the DFT, we will first calculate energies. And that's what I did. It's a just difference of uh, the energy of this guy is isolated and then the system. So this is the uh, how we calculated the binding energy. So what information I can, uh, I can, um, uh, highlight here that uh, this surface was the most stable however the binding energy is the lowest however that these the surfaces were among the uh, unstable ones and uh, they are showing the very high binding energy for the co2 and also you can see co2 if you look at the angle it's close to 180 but here it's close to 120 so there are two things one if the surface is the most stable that surface won't interact with the molecules heavily and that's a, that's a basic phenomena and uh, however if the surface is a bit uh, unstable it will be open to make bonds and that's what happened in our calculations as well look at these figures and again co2 is activated here so this is not just the, the co2 now it's something else i will say because it's not having uh, about 180 degree angle so now co2 is activated so this kind of beautiful information you can just uh, calculate, you can do the simulation and calculate. Uh, similar kind of calculation on other copper oxides, all possible configurations you can try and then you can calculate how much the charge is transferring. The more the charge transferred, you can say the, most, the more my molecule or more my, my surface is activated. And uh, you can calculate the vibrational frequencies and uh, compare them with the isolated molecule so that now the, the frequencies have been changed. So it, everything is, uh, uh, is indicating that uh, our molecule, the CO2, is uh, activated. Once it is activated, of course, it's, it's uh, easy to convert into something good to paste out of few.
uh, I mean, you can convert waste to fuels. Next step is to look at actually how you are going to do that. So one way could be that uh, one way could be that uh, I break the CO2 into CO and O when forming the carbon monoxide. But when I calculated that the barrier, which you can do using uh, RDFT codes, is very high. So you can tell your experimental colleagues that no, this is not the way that you should go. It is not going to work. So second option which I uh, uh, which um, is left, that I'm saying that you have to form something fuels, you say methane or uh, methanol or formic acid. So anything you know form, you should have the hydrogen in your system. Now the second question, if I have to get the hydrogen from where it should come. It can either come from the, uh, the water molecule dissociation or it can come from the hydrogen gas itself. So I need the atomic hydrogen to play with my system and can and, and to form something good. So what we did, uh, we tried to can dissociate the molecule over the circle. As you can see, this is our initial configuration, this is our final configuration. And if you look at these values, 0.19 electron volt, if you look at these values, 0.21, both are suggesting you that uh, you can get hydrogen, atomic hydrogen from uh, any of these two methods. The values are really low. And then we calculated the multiple transition states to form formic acid actually. And one way uh, when I'm saying the formic acid, so this, uh, let me just explain this, uh, the green uh, uh, balls are signifying the oxygen of CO2 molecule. This is black ones are the, copper, uh, the carbon, while this guy uh, is the surface actually, where the blue ones are the copper and red ones are the oxygen of the surface. And the dark gray uh, color is of the hydrogen. So I'm not saying that you look at the, all these uh, configurations. Just give me a glimpse of uh, how these calculations are useful in such kind of applied areas. So uh, what happened actually if you're a chemical engineer or you're working in the material tuning uh, for energies, uh, you will uh, try to convert it into fuels and one way is going uh, carboxyl part. But look at this, the red line. Oh my God! It's really, really high. Three point three five electron volt. So, uh, no, no, uh, no one going, uh, going to form such kind of uh, reactions in your lab. So, our calculations suggesting you that don't even try to waste your time or money in forming the carboxyl on copper oxide. What I'm saying that, look at this uh, uh, for uh, the alternative path. Why don't you form the formate? And formate is look at this. 0 0.18, 0 0.18, 0 0.14 is just negligible amount of, I mean, very small amount of energy. Just give them and you will form the format. And the, the second hydrogenation, if you have to do, it's just spontaneous even. You, you, you just need very small 0 0.04 electron volt to form formic acid. So you you uh, you won't waste much time in doing so, in, uh, unnecessary experiments in your lab. You will just follow the path which a uh, computational scientist will suggest. We have a couple of papers in this field where we investigated copper oxide kind of uh, nanomaterials and, uh, and inspired from our uh, theoretical papers. Uh, so our colleagues at uh, UCL, they did some experiments as well and uh, they synthesized, characterized in 10 images of copper oxide. So here you look at uh, what they are saying that this is a 111 plane 10 images and 0.23 nanometer is, is, is the distance between the two planes. So what I, uh, if you, you compare this, uh, yeah, here, if I calc uh, when we calculated the this distance, it was exactly same what we found in the 10 images of the copper particles, copper oxide nanoparticles. So we are in line actually. And then what they did, so they, uh, they, uh, they did the drift analysis actually. Yeah, so 
they started from uh, CUO, pristine CUO, which is copper two oxide, and they, they bombarded the hydrogen gas over that uh, chamber. And over the time, what they found, they found this salmon pink color, as you can see, dot dot lines are here. So these dotted lines are swing. I mean, uh, uh, signifies the format actually. They form the format over some interval, and that's it. Very less yield of, uh, as you can see, the green ones, which is a methane and car uh, carbon monoxide. They also found that after some point, uh, uh, this uh, CuO was uh, uh, converting into copper oxide was converting to copper. So our experimental colleagues were also really puzzled at what's happening here at this moment. And then they called us that uh, help to uh, help to, uh, help us to understand what's happening at the nano level. So uh, we finally published uh, in, uh, in a combined journal. And uh, what we did, uh, what I did. So uh, when you will do DFT calculation on pristine copper oxide, this is pristine copper oxide surface actually. And as soon as you have a hydrogen molecule over it. As soon as you have a hydrogen molecule over it, I repeat, what happens? Hydrogen molecule takes one oxygen out of the surface and forms the water. So, what I'm saying that hydrogen gas is interacting with the surface and forming the uh, water. And in the formation of water, it's taking oxygen out of the surface. So, so try to understand what's happening. As a computational, or uh, I mean, uh, look at the model. We have it. We have a three oxygens here. Three oxygen here, uh, and one oxygen was here actually in the surface. So one oxygen is now not here. It is now. It has now formed the water. So actually, what happening is a copper oxide is reducing. Copper oxide is reducing to copper. Uh, I mean, CuO is reducing to CO2. And finally, when you have more and more uh, hydrogen, it will take all, all of uh, oxygen out of the surface and forms uh, the pristine copper. But what's happening here? Uh, we are getting formate. So if you remember early, my earlier slides, uh, this slide. We already concluded that if you have a copper to a copper ox, uh, CO two, then in the no time you will be having the formic acid, and that's the same phenomena is happening here. That hydrogen is reducing CuO into CO two, and once CO two is formed, of course you will be having the formic and formic acid. So. Yeah, it uh, looks easy, but uh, yeah, it's not that easy to convert such kind of uh, transition states and barriers. You have to play with many configurations and do so many uh, compute extensive calculations. But uh, yeah, these are really powerful uh, techniques. I'm to tell you one of the applications which I would like to highlight here. We are going to work on the application and implementation. Of uh, and uh, how DFT can be used in the application of uh, different day-to-day uh, uh, -day life. It's uh, uh, the water purification. This was a project uh, uh, done with the professor uh, T. Pradeep at IIT Madras. So why graphene? I, I think I should not waste uh, much time over the graphene, but uh, everybody knows it's a heavy large surface area. So that's why uh, we switched the graphene oxide. But the question was experimentally they found that there's a so much of pesticides that can they can remove from the water, and uh, so the question uh, uh, came to us that uh, is really ha this happening, and what is the uh, science behind that, and how much uh, pesticides they can absorb from the water, what is the upper limit over it? So that's the question that you can answer from the DFT calculations. So we looked at the th these are the three pesticides found in the Environment, and uh, we tried to simulate the structures. We looked at the pristine graphene G stands for graphene, and uh, CP for uh, one of the uh, 
pesticide purifier fish and W is for the water. So we looked at different configurations, one where no water, one when there is no graphene and one where uh, we have all the three and for all these three systems we tried so many different configurations. This is uh, the table giving you the adoption energy and if you look at the red ones, uh, PG, P for pesticide, G for graphene, uh, it's a 31.72, I, I, I repeat, it's positive 31.72. So, it means pesticide and graphene, this configuration, they are not going to bind until unless you provide some external energy, so it's an endothermic reaction. However, when you have a water, exothermic, however, when we have a ternary complex, they are very, uh, very much stable and uh, then the binding energy is very strong. So that's what's happening uh, when we introduce a uh, graphene oxide filter in the water. And then we extended the system, tried to calculate uh, how many, uh, how many, uh, I mean, what are the maximum adsorption capacity uh, we can uh, remove from the water by particular surface area of the graphene. Uh, so uh, then uh, something on the 2D materials which are like graphene. So as I said that this is the uh, work which was uh, uh, I started uh, uh, working with the Professor Sienna Rao there and uh, what what the motivation of Professor Rao was that uh, you have a hexagonal boron nitride which is uh, uh, having the similar kind of structure of uh, graphene and graphene is a zero band gap semiconductor so you can see while uh, this guy why don't you mix these guys and uh, try to explore the new uh, new kind of new family of materials that's what we did again the figures in that you have a uh, here uh, you have a insulator and here you are having the zero band gap semiconductor What's happening if we tune the carbon concentration in the DN lattice? Or I can say that uh, uh, what happens when we tune, tune the boron and try to uh, contend in the graphene? We looked at the computers and the computational engineer. Uh, we have to look at all the aspect, all the configurations. So this is uh, the different configuration at particular uh, doping, doping concentration. And we we found that if you have boron boron at uh, uh, somewhere, this is uh, yeah. If you have a boron boron or nitrogen nitrogen bonds, you can see this is uh, B B. Such kind of uh, structures are not going to exist. However. The most stable structure was kind of this is armchair configuration where we have a CN and BN bonds. CN and BC bond actually. Second information what we uh, uh, we got was that uh, the bigger the chunk of particular boron nitride and the most stable is the structure. And these are the uh, uh, a table showing you that uh, different materials uh, depending upon the configuration. Uh, giving you the tunable band gap materials. We looked at the application of the uh, how you can reduce the greenhouse gases from these BCM materials. And uh, this is the experimental figure actually, and it's showing that uh, this is having a huge surface area compared to graphene, and uh, they can uh, the uptake of methane and CO2 is really high. So, uh, computationally, we calculated the, uh, the most stable structure. We placed the molecules over the supercell, but I will show you it while we will be discussing the content of special exercises. And we will calculate the binding energy. And uh, we found the optimum storage capacity. And uh, yeah, so 44 weight percentage of the optimum one for the CO2 and 22.5 weight percentage was for the optimum storage for the methane. 
and this was a highlighted as one of the hottest article in, in organic chemistry about uh, yeah, 10 years back in uh, chemistry scam and this is a recent work uh, uh, which uh, well, what we did here we <coughs> we developed the new materials and uh, uh, we looked at the two dimensional valium nitride and uh, try to mix with the graphene and uh, boron nitride and uh, when we calculate the formation energies <coughs> we found that these these structures are, re are even more stable compared to the pristine graphene and uh, helium nitride as you can see the formation is really low minus <coughs> 6.8 and the second bit uh, uh, good thing about these structures are these are the direct band gap materials so these, uh, these materials can be used in the optical electronics applications uh, one of the area where uh, you can uh, use such kind of calculation is uh, uh, in, uh, is introducing or uh, investigating the defects because defects play a very, very crucial role in the material properties it could be mechanical properties or any application wise so we can have a different kind of uh, edges uh, i mean different kind of uh, defects uh, as dislocation slip plane say or you can have uh, uh, five seven missing atom de defects look like a dislocation in the graphene so th this have been observed actually in the experiments as well so uh, you won't uh, find any pure material if you look at uh, uh, any kind of uh, mostly you will have defects so it's a uh, different set beautiful and uh, they define different properties they govern different properties actually So, first principle simulations can predict global defects, and that, that's what we did actually. We looked at the five seven defects in the case of uh, graphene, and uh, we calculated that uh, what is the binding energy for such kind of defects in case of uh, graphene uh, was done by my colleague. But uh, I worked on the BCN materials. This is our. Uh, uh, calculated energy and uh, based on GTA calculations and what's happening at the, at the uh, atomic level gives you more information actually so you, uh, we are trying to look at the phonons and electrons as a result of these stone walls defect so all these information you can you know uh, uh, open a system on your realization software and look at the, what was initially uh, and uh, uh, what happened to structure after the defect and uh, when we looked at the phonons what we found that even phonons gives you information regarding the defect this was a phonon dispersion for the pure graphene and if you look at the uh, the G band uh, after stone world defects uh, the G band uh, softened uh, by 20, 26 centimeter however uh, uh, can, uh, yeah d band hardness by 13 centimeter so uh, even if i'm not aware what i will do i will calculate the phonons and phonon will you give you the uh, exact signature of defects so that's the beauty of the thing that your basic thing that we can calculate from the uh, DFT calculations. Phonons also, as I said, that imaginary frequency will will uh, uh, highlight some kind of uh, instability in the system. Yeah. So this is all about the uh, the applications uh, which I am working uh, from past few years uh, on the uh, different uh, materials using uh, density function theory. Now uh, um, let me switch to the another PPT where uh, we are going to look at the quantum espresso. It is. is there any questions? Uh, are we connected still? Is there any issues? Dr. Sukla, am I audible? All okay? Yes, yes. You are yes, audible. Yes, yes. Fine. Yeah, yeah. So, 
so if anybody wants to ask any question now then he may <coughs> discuss it now so what i'm going to do i'm i'm going to switch to the more uh, uh, you know uh, technical uh, session where i will be introducing the basic concepts of the dft and how uh, you can uh, do such kind of uh, things using a software content specific hi abhishek this is bulumani hi bulumani yeah yeah so yeah nice to uh, go through your works Thanks. So yeah, so carry on. We will. Uh, I'm interested in listening to the quantum aspects, so technical things. Yeah, Thanks, <laughs> maybe we have some questions, or maybe I'll talk to you later on. Also. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, there is uh, one question, Professor uh, Mister uh, yeah. Devasis Paul asked: Is it possible to run quantum aspects on Linux subsystem or uh, Windows? Provided I meet all the system requirement, including having Fortran and C compilers. Uh, so the question is, uh, uh, I mean, I didn't get it properly. So question is, is it to, uh, uh, is it possible to do such kind of calculation? Question laptop? is that uh, actually, what the, uh, I also couldn't able to understand. The question is, is it possible to run Quantum Expresso? On a Linux subsystem or Windows? Yeah. So what I usually do is, uh, I mean, what you can do at the initial level is to install a virtual box on your machine or uh, dual boot it. Windows, uh, no. You have to go for the Linux only, and uh, then there you can easily install it and have such kind of uh, you know. Uh, basic calculations, but again, it depends upon how many CPUs you are having in your laptop, or, and how bigger system we are going to work on it. May I interrupt here? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, actually, this is possible to run the quantum espresso on um, which he is asking. Actually, Windows subsystem on Linux is a platform mm -hmm. where you can get all the commands of uh, Linux on the Windows. So it is it is available only in Windows 10 and onwards. Windows subsystem for Linux. So here they can have all the commands of this uh, Linux, but only problem is with the visualization softwares. So they need to apply something which is uh, people use to use for the remote servers. If you are running calculation on the remote server, you cannot view directly the pictures. So for that, we need to install some softwares. I don't recall actually the name of those softwares right now. So using that, they can also see the visualization. Yeah. And as you rightly pointed out that the virtual box is another solution. They, they can use with the virtual box. They can run the calculation with the virtual box. But this is possible with this uh, his uh, question. His or her question, I don't yeah, they were CC call. So it, it, it is possible. It is yeah, that, yeah, that was, I think uh, visualization software you mean to say expression, they know, etc., etc., right? So yeah, those, yeah. those uh, will not be possible, uh, but I think uh, Vesta, etc., will work. Vesta and all. No, yeah. no, no. Bulumaniji, what I am saying is that all the softwares, visualization softwares, which are available in the Linux, can be run on the Windows subsystem for Linux. Only for mm -hmm. them, for that they need to uh, install some other software. Then okay. it, will, it will just work like a remote system. Yeah, yeah. Remote server. Mm -hmm. I don't exactly recall the name. If I get the name, I will tell. And that is the content special works. Yes, yes, it, it works. Okay, okay. So yes. what I mean, um, my experience is I never use this kind of uh, you know interface, but I use the always the virtual box. And uh, yeah, virtual box works fine. Yeah, but virtual box is a problem. It, it requires more memory. Agree, totally agree, totally agree. I have done it there. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, recently, when I bought a new laptop, I tried this Windows subsystem for Linux, and it is working. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Yes, yes. Somebody has written Xmin is one thing for visualization. Xmin, and there is other thing Y Y four ten or something like that. So both are possible. So Mukesh, uh, uh, Mukesh Pandey, you have uh, something to ask me for. Mukesh, you please uh, unmute yourself and ask the question directly. 
मुकेश पांडे यस डॉक्टर मिश्रा यस आई डू हैव वन क्वेश्चन एंड इट इज रिलेटेड टू योर योर एक्सपेरिमेंट योर योर स्टडीज ऑन पेस्टिसाइड रिमूवल यूजिंग ग्रेफिन Ah, my personal experience is that instead of graphene, if you would have used graphene oxide, the efficiency would have been much, much better. Uh, yeah. What is uh, okay. what is your uh, view on that? This, 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 this part. Yeah. So, uh, um, are you uh, saying that uh, in experiments, right? Pardon me. In experiments, as should have uh, people should have used graphene. No, in experiments as well as in in any kind of study. I mean, even in the theoretical or simulation study, you would have yeah. seen uh, so, yeah. far yeah, more uh, better efficiency. And uh, you said uh, you had yeah. mentioned uh, some kind of uh, 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 your yeah. uh, binding energy and all such kind of. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yes, you are uh, right. Uh, in the real experiments, it was uh, graphene oxide actually. But in the simulations, uh, we did calculate. I mean, yeah, uh, I am already asking. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Mishra. Yes. Uh, I do have one question, uh, and it is related to your uh, your experiment, your your studies on pesticide removal using graphene. Uh, my personal experience is that instead of graphene, if you would have used graphene oxide, the efficiency would have been much much better. Uh, what is uh, what is your uh, view on that? This 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 part. Yeah. So, uh, um, are you uh, saying that uh, in experiments, right? Is there some problem in the? Uh, अभिषेक जी यस हेलो एक्चुअली कैन टेक द क्वेश्चन लेटर ऑन आफ्टर द अदरवाइज इट विल बी लेट सो इट्स बेटर इफ यू कंटिन्यू एंड देन आफ्टर द डिलीवरेशन इज ओवर वी विल टेक व्हाट एवर द क्वेश्चन इज या श्योर So, so participant, to... please be are with us. We have to first finish our deliberations. Please be are with us. Mr. Ji, please continue. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, so everyone, I request please switch off your mics because you have so much, uh, you know, I don't know what the recording issues was. Uh, let me share my screen again, uh, PPT. So, yeah. it's a package, uh, we call it PWSCF package. Why PW? It's a plain view uh, kind of implementation. What plain view? And so the potential list will be looking at details in the next uh, few slides. And uh, SCF is the self consistent uh, uh, approach of the DFT that we implement here. And it was developed by uh, Stefano Baroni and uh, co workers. And it can do so many things. Of course, the, the, uh, the majority of the calculations are based uh, on. Uh, uh, Carry on, yeah. Just a minute. Dr. Pandey, Dr. Pandey, please mute yourself. It is creating nuisance. Kindly mute yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so usually in, in so many uh, basic calculations or most of the applications that I presented in uh, today, uh, we work on uh, calculating the SCF uh, ground state energy and illustrating the cone sum orbitals uh, doing the structural optimization. In some calculations, the spin orbit uh, uh, coupling spin uh, and dilution calculations are really important. And then it can also do molecular dynamics uh, calculations. Uh, we can use it to calculate the microscopic polarization, like a very phase calculation, very phase polarization, and of course we can use the hybrid function as well for the uh, fast calculation of exact exchange using localization. So there's so much stuff that you can do from the quantum space, and uh, sometimes in your whole life uh, you will not be able to explore each and everything that is in the, this packet is having. So depending upon the uh, material, depending upon the application, we do the uh, a particular calculation in the quantum space. We do have a separate uh, uh, package for the phonon vibrational frequency calculations as well. And uh, this is, uh, as I highlighted, it's uh, useful in calculating the stability and then the dielectric properties, electron phonon uh, uh, coupling constants and so many other things. Then we have a uh, post-processing packages in the quantum espresso as well, where we uh, suppose you calculate the energy, binding energy or whatever, and then you want to calculate the, the STM maps, uh, you want to calculate the electron electronic densities, DOS, density of states calculation. So these comes under the post-processing tools of the quantum espresso. And if you type the, so many of the slides have uh, been taken from the Quantum Espresso website itself. Uh, these slides are uh, available to everyone. Many of them are from Professor uh, uh, Shobna or from the other uh, Quantum Espresso. Uh, the Quantum Espresso, the good thing about the Quantum Espresso is that uh, uh, they used to organize uh, um, schools every year or so where you can attend and learn so it's usually five day uh, or seven day school where uh, each and every detail uh, is being uh, taught by different different professors in the in india as well as outside india and in italy uh, uh stefano used to come to bangalore when i was in csr and then professor sobna is also very much in, into such kind of schools so I, i'm just using those basic slides which are already available on the website you can download and can go through again and again the the exercises that i will be taking tomorrow actually are also aware there and i suggest i will show you where are they and how you can access so before coming to uh, uh tomorrow's lecture you can go through those exercises if you if you're uh, new to the quantum so it's really difficult but uh, you can make a target that yes, now, right now I would like to work on quantum space oil. But if you have already, already done calculations, some basic calculations, or at least have installed a quantum space on your laptop or on the server, then the life is easy actually. 
So I don't have much time. Uh, uh, I have one and a half hour uh, session tomorrow and the 30 minutes here. So what I will do, I will give you only a brief of the basic calculation that you can do in from the content of espresso and how uh, the technical details are being implemented in our basic calculations. So this is the website of Content Espresso uh, software uh, www.content.espresso.org where you'll find everything related to this uh, software and uh, as it says that it's an integrated suite of open source computer codes for electronic structure computation and materials modeling at the nano scale and uh, it is based on DFT, plane views and pseudo why content is so? Because it's uh, content mechanics and uh, developed by Steve Bagadano and all from the IT. So, so copy they really like, and that's why the name is Quantum Espresso. So, what we'll do, uh, uh, let's look at the, uh, the first thing that uh, has uh, the, uh, the, the two main theorems of the DFT is that uh, uh, if you can calculate the energy. Uh, the ground state energy it reflects all the basic properties. So, as I said, that it's a SCF method which we are going to remove in the calculations, and uh, it's also referred as a. I don't know, I'm, I think I'm, I didn't I manage to attend all the lectures in the last few days, but I did a few, and uh, I believe that this kind of basic things so you already know that uh, it's a uh, uh, Hartree-Fock method actually de determines the energy of a many body system in a stationary state. So, and uh, this method seeks self consistency in the calculation. So, what our aim is to is to identify the lowest energy arrangement of atoms, and uh, I propose or I I start from a some density value, and again based on that density we calculate the properties and uh, if it is self-consistent, then fine, then I, I will be able to extract the information. So that, that's how it works. So it's a procedure to use uh, uh, to find solutions to cylinder equation and obtain energy of the molecular systems. And it is based on a guess and check approach. If that's not going to work, we change the system, we again calculate and if it's going the right direction, uh, then we proceed in the same direction. If not, we change the geometry and do the calculations with a pretty charge density like that. So uh, it starts from the Consum uh, approach actually, where we try to calculate the Hamiltonian. And uh, this is the SCF cycle I'm trying to show you that uh, how it works. We I start from some initial guess of our densities of our system and then we calculate the energies and uh, look at if it is self consistent if it is okay okay if not i will i will play with the my in the, in the initial guess so initial guess was not great actually So uh, the first thing that uh, we have to do with so, say, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say that I'm going to work on a silk or I'm uh, work on uh, iron. So I should be uh, knowing how the system looks and uh, uh, technically I should know the atomic structure of a particular system where I'm going to uh, do the calculations. So I should know the lattice and I should know the basis where the atoms are situated. So let me show you the website first and then we'll come back again to these slides. So I just add a PWSCF input and I will be here. So that's the web page will help you all in your life if you're working on the content is so and uh, this is uh, this space contains the details of each and every tag that you can use while doing the DFT calculations from the content is so 
if it's okay. Yeah. So there are so many system domain so many sections in the input file. And the first one is the control section actually. So we will uh, we will come back again to this particular control section. And then second uh, second uh, uh, section of the file is defining your system, what your system is, how that system looks like, and so on. Then how you are going to uh, how you are going to you know relax or how you are how you are going to treat your electrons in the systems, and uh, then they just uh, tag and percent ions so ions means your uh, your atomic nuclei so how you are going to play with those this, this section will define uh, this is regarding uh, your atomic cell how bigger is that kind of things this generally we don't do in the optical places and uh, what are the atomic species? If I have a silicon, I will write silicon here also. If I have iron, if it's a multiple composite, I will write different species, whatever I'm having. That is copper oxide, I will write Cu and O. Then you have to define the atomic positions at uh, where that copper is or where that oxygen is for each and every atom. Now, as these are the, we are working on the uh, solid state materials we are not working on them isolated molecules so you have to define the k points of the beryllium zone for the more accurate calculations of the 3d kind of system so uh, i it's just a, a very uh, general overview i am presenting at the moment then we'll come back again to ppt and then we'll again come back to this uh, sections actually so yeah we do, generally we don't use that cell parameters, constraint, occupation, these are the, um, generally we don't use in our uh, uh, basic DFT calculations. And then if you look at it, there is uh, everything defined here. So what I will suggest uh, uh, today you go through uh, at least once uh, regarding all these things. And uh, yeah, so now let me go back again to my PPT. So I just said that uh, uh, the first thing that you need is to define your system and we have a, a basic uh, uh, tag N80 N80 means and for number 85 items number of items in the unit cell so if I have one I will write one if I have a hundred I will write hundred then you have to define that uh, how many different type of items you are having so if I have a copper oxide, I will write particular. And I have two types, otherwise one or a type hundred. Then you have a one uh, next card which is important to define your uh, structure in the atomic position. So initial position of atoms, you have to define. You have to define the lattice vectors as well. And for everything, you have different different units in which you can define in your input file. The problem happens actually, I mean, uh, if it's a periodic, I don't have any problem. My, my uh, code is a, uh, having PDC implementation. So, but what happens if uh, you are going to work on a system to not periodic? Suppose you have a set, uh, you have a surface. So when I'm going to have a surface, uh, I will not be having any anything on that direction. So I will introduce what I will do. I will create a vacuum here. I will say that okay, we have a tenant from something, so that I don't see the image of my system in the z direction and i will be having uh, a room to play with the surface atoms how we do calculations on the surface systems 
uh, second example is to uh, uh, can we have uh, uh, if we have an NOI, what I will do? So we have to uh, introduce the artificial periodicity along the y and z direction. Again, if you have a cluster, again you have to do some social things. You have to work on the supercells. You have to do the vacuums because our course on the quantum is also is like that. Also, PBC implementation is there, so it will just replicate what you are having. So if you if you are not having the vacuum, it will replicate in the all the directions. What happens if you have a impurity? In that case, also, I mean, if you have any defect, as you can see, the green, uh, the green atom is having is in the vacancy or impurity. So, in that case, also, we have to uh, work on supercells. Actually, again, if you have a amorphous or semi aquatic or crystalline system, which is not uh, perfectly crystalline. In that case, also you need to construct a supercell. Supercell means a large unit cell. So the problem with such kind of calculation is, uh, we you have to work on uh, large unit cells, and uh, it will uh, it will be having consuming uh, more and more time, and uh, but we have to do that to minimize the effect of, uh, of periodicity actually. So again the step one is is what we discussed so far. Step one is to construct your system and how you will construct that you will define uh, if it is uh, uh, for example graphene we will provide the cell structure we will provide the atomic position of a carbon atom. If it is a uh, uh, borocarbon attached BCN, I will uh, provide the atomic position of it. You have advantages of uh, using the potential files, and that's why we use it actually a uh, more efficient calculation and it's smoother potential decrease the number of expensive coefficients. So, uh, in a good way, I'm saying that uh, uh, your calculation will be much easier to perform. To perform. But again, depending upon how you have written the pseudo potential, uh, sometimes they are uh, not very accurate. So the actual calculate, the actual property that you're kind of going to calculate, uh, they deviate from their true uh, their real values. So uh, what it does, or what we are going to do in the quantum espresso. Uh, they replace the nuclear potential by pseudo potential and these are pseudo potential codes. So there, there are other codes as well which are not pseudo potential. They take uh, they work on the core uh, electrons as well. So if you go in the quantum space website, uh, let me let me show you in the quantum space website as well. I will just type. Quantum espresso and finish here. We go here. So here I am having the whole periodic table, and uh, as I said that uh, DFT is an approximation where we try to solve the Schrodinger equation by using so many so many approximations. Uh, the initial one was the the bond. No, continue approximation. However, then the main uh, concept is regarding how closely you can write the exchange correlation function. And uh, while writing exchange correlation function, of course, uh, what I'm saying is a pseudo potential. So, how uh, accurately you are using that kind of approach, LDA approach, or GGA approach, or the advanced ones. So, if I click on any attempts, uh, say carbon. It gives me so many files depending upon what kind of uh, uh, appro approximation it is using. So generally the, uh, the notation is like that. PBE is a uh, functional type and is a GGA actually. And uh, so whenever, whenever you see PBE, it means it's a uh, GGA approximation pseudo potential. 
and then there are others as well and after, after uh, pbe i will say to look at for the uh, the lda ones so usually pz kind of uh, of files you will see where you will find the lda approximation of the uh, yeah so you look at this pz the pz is lda exchange code so again in the pz or pbe you will see so many files so that depends upon the version of on the uh, author so if you are uh, more into the code development uh, you work on that particular uh, research domain you will work for the development of the pseudo potential files more accurate pseudo potential file that can uh, beautifully capture all the material specific properties so that's how does it uh, let me let me just open it one so it will it's it's a huge file actually we will just use it in our in, in our uh, system uh, i mean we will uh, download it and we will use it in our calculations so, so it says that the uh, what valence uh, electrons it see uh, what x by the higher the operation part so i think i should do, i should be uh, quitting now it's close to 3:30 and uh, we will be uh, coming back to this ppt and uh, and uh, the linux terminal where we will uh, yeah one more thing if you try to uh, just try quantum so tutorial so if you if you click on this the first link and you will be ended here quantum is so the real website in their tutorials so what uh, this page is it uh, list all uh, the past uh, uh, workshops and tutorials and uh, uh, one of them which i like is uh, this hands on tutorial of the quantum is so sorry yeah so the there are few slides which i'm using at the moment to explain you quantum espresso it's listed there as well and then there are uh, the uh, the the right up regarding how you can you know install quantum espresso though, though i'm not going to uh, install this part uh, tomorrow but uh, what i will be doing i will be going to the uh, the basic uh, exercises mentioned here so uh, in Today, you know what I will suggest if you really wanna, uh, you are you are starting this calculation, just have a look at those uh, exercises and write up that will help you in the tomorrow's lecture. That's it uh, regarding my uh, I mean, um, today's lecture. Uh, Doctor Sukla, Doctor Sukar, over to you. Uh, Obisek ji, there are two questions. Yes. One from Poti. Uh, is asking uh, about is there any software which consume less time and computational requirements for phonon calculations? No, more or less all uh, are uh, taking the same time. Just uh, there have been few, few papers which compare the WASP, uh, Abinit, uh, or Quantum Espresso. But uh, I'll say that um, my answer is no. More or less, it will take the same time. And uh, more or less, okay. And uh, uh, one question from Devasis Pal is asking, how can we determine the accurate Howard correction values for the individual atoms in a cell or super cell? How can we calculate the exact values of what? Accurate Howard correction values for individual atoms in a cell or super cell. Howard correction. It is in the chat box. Hubbard, Hubbard correction. Oh, okay, Hubbard yes. correction. Good. Yeah. So uh, it's a trial and error, actually. I'll say there. Uh, you have to start. Uh, so let me share my screen first again. Uh, share my screen. Yeah, so it is uh, like an empirical kind of approach where you have to start from the uh, plane DFT, I mean, zero U value, and uh, increase it 
and compare whatever information experimental parameters you are having in the literature or experimentally available. And uh, suppose if I started from the zero, uh, I mean the plane DFT, and I calculated the band gap, uh, it, it's a G, uh, zero as well. But when I uh, introduced a value of three, what I saw that now my ga gap started opening actually. And uh, after some value close to 7.1 or so, uh, we were in the range for both the pan gap and uh, as well as for the magnetic moment. So there is no specific uh, uh, way you have to start from value and keep it uh, in, in the y axis. What is the yeah, in the graph point. in the y axis? What is it? So this is this is a band gap on the y axis, and here is the magnetic okay. moment. Uh, in the second graph, it is band gap. Yes, uh, second is the magnetic moment. The first one is the band gap. Okay. Ah, okay. uh, Abhishek. Yes, Doctor Mulgum. Yeah, Hubbard correction uh, u is equal to zero means it is uh, excluding u, right? It's yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so do you think that uh, this Hubbard correction basically? Improves the band structure. Means I know that this is one of the methods. Uh, we can also go for the ZW as well as the inclusion of hybrid exchange correlation consonant. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I I just would like to uh, know uh, from your experience. Means uh, although ZW corrections are very uh, time consuming calculations. See that is yeah that is the main problem with the ZW and the and the uh, SIC approach or hybrid functional. That yeah. uh, we don't have much time, and then when you have a bigger system like what I had here, actually, uh, okay. I mean, I I used for the surface calculations, and uh, uh, my aim was really not into accurate prediction of the band gap, but uh, when you have a bulk system, mm. then uh, yeah, then you can go for the GW calculations, yeah, yeah, which, are, yeah. which are more accurate actually. But yes. the only advantage of such kind of new parameter calculation, but because they are very much, uh, le I mean, uh, they are less expensive compared to. GW. Yeah, it is. It is acceptable, right? Even yes. If yes. It yeah. To 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 totally. Totally agree. Yeah. Yeah. So it's even a, it's, it's just a better uh, uh, way to define your d electrons here. Yeah, but at the uh, at that time uh, you have to have some idea about the uh, uh, actual band structure or band gap, right? Then only uh, okay. you, means you have to have some reference, either theoretical or experimental. Yes, Otherwise, yes. Uh, yeah, as you okay. have to rectify, so, right? So, so, yeah, even if it's so for the same, uh, uh, I mean, I think GW calculation or the the hybrid functions or different hybrid functions will be producing a different different band gaps actually. So unless mm. I have something in the, my hand, I, I will be somewhere lost actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Obviously, again, you have a lot of experience in quantum espresso. So um, still, I consider myself new in this area. So one uh, query: you have uh, done the phonon dispersion calculations, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So means what type of calculation it was? It was a gamma point or both. You can do the dispersion as well. You can do the the uh, gamma point. Oh, as well. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So means how means what is the basis of selection of the method? I mean, there are on, only one method. I think. Uh, uh, which is being, uh, which is there. The only thing that we do, I mean, gamma point, we do for the quick calculations. Otherwise, you should have a full, uh, full, full, full dispersion range actually for all the key points. Yes, yeah, sorry, sorry. Means, uh, how do you, how do you decide it that uh, we have to do the gamma point? It is computationally less expensive, or yeah, that's the only thing. That's the only thing. Otherwise, ideally, you should have the. A uh, complete picture. Yeah, it's yeah, just uh, it, it's the, just the same thing what we do in the calculation of band structures, electronic band structures actually. That uh, uh, sometimes a gamma point particular uh, the material is showing uh, some behavior, so say metallic. But at yeah. some other points, it might be uh, showing the clear picture to you. Yeah. So irrespective of the uh, size of the cell. Yeah. You can do gamma, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes. Follow gamma point for uh, each and every cell, right? Irrespective of yeah. its size. Yes, irrespective of the size, I mean, yes, uh, the, the, if you are doing the dispersion calculation for a bigger system, it's going to take ages to complete if you have a small computer, but uh, uh, gamma point calculation are...
not I mean a hundred percent clear picture regarding the stability. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so but it is it has the limitation of uh, the pseudo potentials, right? It doesn't work with each and every pseudo potential. Your, uh, oh, point yes. Well, it, I'm not sure. Many, I mean, I'm not sure. I think it is not suitable for each and every pseudo potential. I think. Oh, yes, yes. Okay. Yes. It has that limitation, right? So, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. They, they do not work. But the, the question is that suppose we are. Uh, performing the calculation with some other pseudo potentials, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, in case of the phonon gamma point calculation, can we switch over to some other pseudo potential? I don't think so. No. Anyone, anyone else gonna make comment? But, but, but I think it should be no same, similar, for exactly the same. Of, yeah, just for the sake of uh, making it simpli simplified. Yeah, I mean, but it. Uh, I mean, uh, if it is particular. Yes. Yeah, so uh, Yes, Dr. Sarkaria. Yes. Sometimes, uh, if you're looking for some particular properties and uh, which uh, for which your uh, pseudo potential is not available, mm -hmm. okay. So it depends upon the particular uh, in phonon calculations. Uh, you are using something, and for uh, other which are not dependent upon, uh, let's say thermodynamic mm -hmm. other parameters, mm -hmm. uh, there you can use here, yeah, no problem, and yeah. for optimization of. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, the only excuse is that uh, the uh, suitable uh, potential was not available. That is. Yeah. The, the one more thing is that suppose you uh, we want to do the hybrid calculations, then also some of the pseudo potentials they do not work. Yes. So it doesn't. Yes. Uh, yeah. So then in that case we have to go to the non-conserving pseudo potential. Yes. It is mandatory. So just like that, I think, like, right? That yeah. I mean that. that yeah. Yes. That. Uh, that I do yes. agree that uh, uh, same kind of families you can non. Con uh, I mean, you can switch, and uh, but yes, it should be the same uh, LDA and GZ. Yeah, uh, one of uh, my last, of, it may be a very funny question to, uh, to you, you, the experts. Uh, suppose we have a super cell. In that case, suppose I need to uh, check the uh, phonon dispersions uh, only to just find out the dynamical stability of the system. In that case, if my unit set is big enough. Uh, can I do the phonon calculation for just one plus one unit then? Is it possible? So, Suppose, many, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, uh, can you repeat? I mean, uh, you're going to do the calculation on a very small, small cell, is it? Suppose I have four plus four unit cell. Okay. Yeah. And for regarding the gamma, phonon gamma point calculation, so, I can mean, I... But, but the question was, uh, you, uh, I mean, the reason that you worked for the four plus four cell might be having some defects also, I mean, or just for the uh, molecular interaction, why you have chosen for the whole cross that's the point. Yeah, at least, at least, yeah, even if it is there, at least for the pristine system, suppose it works well. Yes, with the water yeah, system. yeah, 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 but, but, the, yeah, but it's not necessary that after uh, introducing some defects or some uh, foreign element, uh, the whole system of will course. be stable. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, thank you. Dr. Kalita. Uh, I had uh, this type of problem previously and uh, uh, actually what we have seen is that if you do a smaller, I mean, uh, unit cell calculations, then due to age effect, uh, it's very difficult. It's, ideally, you should get it, but uh, practically, uh, it's very difficult to get all the negative frequencies. You will end up with some uh, frequency, uh, negative frequencies. So, uh, if you want to get uh, early success, then it's better to go to the supercell. Then you can easily get rid of this negative point, which might help in the unit cell. Okay, okay, okay. Ideally, the, uh, both should work in principle. Actually, in, in practical case, it never happens. Oh, okay, okay. So you mean to say that the bigger cells uh, will give you better pixel? Bigger means bigger, so means super cell. Super cell, yeah. Yeah, so super cell gives better results than uh, unit cell. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, thank you. That, that thank is you. what I have said, but I, I don't yeah, find any practical. Definitely, uh, the practical things are definitely they are not exactly as that of the theoretical ones, right? Yeah. Thank you. So. Uh, 
if anybody has any question uh, Mr. Uh, I have got one uh, question uh, uh, yeah it's very trivial uh, but uh, I thought let me just ask you <laughs> see uh, wasp has got a very extensive library on uh, pseudo potentials and it works very well my my query is following that can is there any way if you can emulgate those potentials which are available in wasp with your quantum espresso that's my basic question is it possible uh, well, i don't know to be honest i have not seen that uh, people are doing that but uh, it's, it's should be possible by any means uh, by integrating the pseudo potential look at that and how they have written that particular pseudo potential file and those i mean suppose you have a wasp uh, uh, pseudo potential file and you can just convert it into a format of quantum espresso but to be honest uh, i i don't know that people are working this or not okay thank you thank you uh so uh, we should uh, have to stop here tomorrow again and uh, you will get the uh, speaker again uh, because uh, we have another lecture now so thank you uh, dr obhishek bisra for your uh, nice presentation and uh, uh, discussion with the uh, students uh, and uh, faculties uh, and the postdocs uh, we are very really, uh, honored uh, to have you with us uh, uh, thank, thank you, you. Shukla ji. Yeah, yeah. Th thank you, Dr. Sagar. Thank you very much, Abhishek ji, for the wonderful lecture and the follow-up discussion. Uh, and look, we are looking forward to your another sure. lecture tomorrow. And uh, Dr. Sarkar already told, we request the participant, if you have any question, you can discuss the questions uh, tomorrow in his uh, lecture, before the lecture or after the lecture, as you are coming in. Thank, thank you very you, much. Thank you. So now, now we have the next lecture by Professor Aviji K. Das. Uh, so, lecture will be starting at 3:45. So we have now only two to three minutes for the break. So let us uh, take water, whatever. So after after just three minutes, so we will reassemble. Means uh, we are here, but we will start formally this second lecture.
so welcome friends uh, now it's time for the second lecture uh, the second speaker professor abhijit k das has already joined professor das can you hear me Good afternoon, sir. Now you can see your screen. Okay. Full screen, na? Are you? Full screen, sir. Share, 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 share. Okay. Okay. Present, present. Thank you. Do you enter screen? Enter screen. Enter. Share, share, share. Are you enter screen? Enter screen. Is it clear, sir? समथिंग अबाउट आवर फर्स्ट Four, uh, four field. I mean uh, the valuable complexes, metal, organic, uh, material, and organic chemistry, hydrogen storage, and and end header for that. And now we talk about uh, toxicology and interaction of metal ion with artificial ion acid and metal gain interaction, and then super halogen and super alkali. Uh, now uh, at the last part of my talk, when we discuss about uh, the We have done the fullerene. Uh, we talk that the the fullerene uh, non-ideal fullerene can be stabilized, mm, uh, can be stabilized either in the hydral way or its hydral way. And uh, and in the first part, I I have shown uh, examples that how uh, lithium is uh, incorporated uh, in this um, fullerene cage. And uh, now there is another part uh, which uh, the uh, non-ideal fullerene can be stabilized. Uh, by uh, uh, exo hydral way, and 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 this work is uh, now under progress, and and uh, and there are uh, this work is under progress, and we are talking about the dual stability, that is stability gained through the both endo and exo modifications, and here is the example uh, where lanthanum is incorporated into the cage of the fullerene, and and this is the endo hydral way, and this is the exo hydral way. And the third one is the both endo and exo uh, hydral way, and the three ways in can stabilize the non-IPR fullerene. And this is uh, some uh, preliminary calculation. And addition of chlorine in fused pentagon ring uh, further stabilizes the system. Whose lanthanum is incorporated, and in C72, uh, and and we see that uh, uh, the 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 first, uh, one lanthanum atom and then uh, two lanthanum atom is uh, incorporated in the In the uh, fluorine cage, and the stability, uh, the binding energy is also calculated, and and in that binding energy is very high. So uh, in that way, this is. An exploration of the reaction of ammonia assisted mechanism. Based on the alkyl mechanism on uh, the hydroxylated and high oxidated NGO model surface, but when we did this work, we don't have, we did not have our past program, so it is a model calculation, and uh, we we study the decomposition in in the magnesium oxide surface, and there are several industrial application as absorbent, a catalyst, catalyst support, and there are two types of NGO surface. One is conventionally prepared bulk NGO. And another is another is also prepared nano scale NGO. So in 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 the conventionally prepared NGO, uh, internal cubic arrangement of uh, uh, MO surface and hexagonal plates, larger surface of cubic cube defect, cube defect, edges and and corners, corners and and then also prepared nano scale NGO. Then internal cubic arrangement, weakly attracted polyethylene particles and highly reactive edges corner. Defect side and stabilize uh, lattice plane. 
Now, lamigastrin in India act as a destructive absorbent of uh, OPC uh, due to a large number of coordinately unsaturated edges. And uh, we model this uh, surface in, in, in this way. And this is the smaller one. Then the, we increase the uh, MGO surface uh, by large number of MGO and uh, oxygen atom. And, and, and DMPT is absorbed in this surface. And this is the bond length uh, for MGO04 and DMPT. And this is the MG16 or 16 DMPT. And the interesting part is that the, the adversarial, there are three, uh, uh, there are uh, four models we, we proposed here for the uh, deoxidated surface and another is for the oxidated surface and we see that the in, in model uh, A, uh, in model uh, A I mean here, there is phosphorus, uh, oxygen and oxygen, two oxygen and one phosphorus involved in the bonding process and in model B, and phosphorus, oxygen and sulfur as we see in this uh, picture. The first one is the P, O and O, in second model the P, O and S and then PO and PS. So all sorts of combination is taken into account uh, uh, to decompose uh, this uh, DMPP. And, and there are other two surfaces, they are all chemia absorption surfaces, that is they make a bond with the DMPT, I mean the organophosphorus compound. And there are another surface, there are physical absorption, E and F. So there are, uh, if it is uh, deoxidated surface, there are four, and it is oxidated surface, there are additional two models, uh, we propose and 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 accordingly uh, we calculate the absorption energy and we see that the, the absorption energy is very high for uh, A and B model where in A model uh, phosphorus oxygen and oxygen uh, two oxygen and one phosphorus involved and model B phosphorus oxygen and sulfur is involved and similarly for P and O for phosphorus and oxygen for model uh, model C and for model D only oxygen is involved. Now, in this um, uh, model, and, and you see that the, in, in both cases, A and B, are, the absorption energy is very high, and uh, model D also, and we will discuss it later, uh, how it, uh, the model works. And, and this is the pathway, uh, uh, how to decomposition pathway. If you look at this one, there are two pathways. One uh, is the stepwise, and, and the left side uh, is the concerted one. In the concerted pathway, the, uh, the, the, it is uh, the ammonia-assisted uh, mechanism by which the DMPT can be decomposed in the uh, toxic compound. In in this pathway, uh, the nuclear uh, file uh, uh, NH3 is attached to the P center and, and H is makes a bond with the S. In, in, in the next step, uh, this uh, uh, S, H and C is will be eliminated and we get the next step. So it is basically, uh, it is basically uh, the, uh, the break of the PS1, this is very important to reduce his, his toxic, toxic character. And that's the second, the, the right hand part uh, uh, is the uh, is the stepwise pathway. And the, for, for concerted, it is C starting, letter is C, and for stepwise, it is started from S. Now, uh, in, in this pathway, you see that the nuclear attack takes place at P, uh, then uh, uh, makes a TS, and then uh, uh, the, uh, the TS is converted to an, another intermediate and the finally this O this bond uh, OH uh, uh, is rotated and makes a bond with this one and and in in the in that and the next step and the produce intermediate TS6 and in the next step then SHC will be eliminated from this one and this is the one and another way is start from there and uh, it goes uh, to uh, this way and and make uh, produce an intermediate this and then this one and and, and at the uh, final stage you see that it is a produce a four member ring with uh, this one o h uh, o c s t and n g o and this is that and finally and uh, this bond will break break and and finally the c s t will be eliminated and and this way in in this uh, structure you see that on this intermediate uh, this h O and C is still be eliminated first, and then the uh, S bond will be break and produce uh, uh, CH3SH, and this compound will be produced. Uh, it is the deoxidated surface, and this is the uh, this is the potential energy surface uh, for this one. Now, if the 
uh, oxidative surface. For oxidative surface, there is also uh, the two parts. Uh, one uh, is the converted and, and another is the stepwise. Uh, uh, in the converted part, the same way, the uh, S, H and CST will be eliminated and produce a less toxic compound. In the concerted part, in, the, in case, what you see in the earlier case, this also goes in the two ways. One is this one and another is this one. Uh, in, in, in the first case, uh, go, uh, uh, this attack uh, the same way as the previous one and produce a bond with uh, P, O, C, H, 3 and M, G. And, and then uh, this bond will be rotated and produce, uh, uh, rotated and H is facing to S and making a bond with S and C, H, 3 will be eliminated in that way. And uh, as we told previous, and and also the path is uh, go to this way, and 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 OH bond will be again be making with O phosphorus bond, uh, and the double bond of phosphorus will break, and 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 it ultimately goes via the different transition state and and intermediate, and and then uh, uh, the the next uh, uh, step or ST5, uh, the C C will be eliminated. And, and finally, uh, sorry, CH3O will be eliminated, and finally, the S bond will break, and CH3H will be eliminated from the uh, compound, and we get the Lex toxic compound. And this is the uh, producing energy surface, producing energy surface, and 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 this is uh, the uh, NGO4B model. Uh, we not the same same thing, and the first CH2 eliminated, and then CH3 will be eliminated, and get the next toxic product. And this is the potential equal model B, where uh, P, O, and S are involved in the bonding process. And, and this is for the uh, uh, hydroxylated. Uh, this is the potential surface, as I told. And this is the mechanistically shown in this way, and how uh, the, the elimination process is take place. And, and now, uh, uh, if you calculate uh, the barrier for different process, we see that uh, this is C for the concerted and S for the stepwise, and you see that for uh, for, uh, for the uh, stepwise process, the activation barrier is very low. And and, and similarly for uh, model B, so uh, this is uh, oxidated, uh, this is deoxidated and this is oxidated, and similarly for model B, this is uh, deoxidated and oxidated. In oxidated surface, the, the transition barrier uh, for this is uh, very low, and, uh, and in, in, uh, in this way, uh, 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 this is uh, the, the bond can be breaking and it reduces the more less toxic compound. Now, conformation of such yield that the three centered absorbed uh, conformer, that is O, in some time it is O, the first case O, P, and S, sorry, first case O, P, and O, the second is O, P, and S is bond is involved. And the catalytic uh, activity of uh, uh, non, uh, non uh, crystallized NGO. In ammonia assisted uh, degradation of MDPT is established, and both pathways, concerted and stepwise, as possible. The stepwise pathway, as I told, is more favorable than the concerted. And now the pH bond cleavage is more favorable than the PO. And catalytic activity of the hydroxylated NGO surface is preferred over the unhydroxylated surface. Now we go to the, uh, the uh, another uh, problem, uh, which is related to more in biology. Um, and this is very interesting problem in the sense that the copper design, uh, uh, so this is in, uh, the, basically the interaction of uh, the copper with, with d penicillamine uh, and its O and AC analog. And you know that copper uh, is an essential element of human body. Now, useful uh, and copper is useful for regulating various biological activities inside our human body. And, and it acts as a cofactor for several enzymes and also play an important role uh, for developing the central nervous system. And now, the, the important thing is that the low concentration of upper inhibits the growth uh, of the nervous system and, and, uh, and, and, and people suffer from uh, various, various neuro problems if the level goes the below the optimum level. And, and on the other hand, the excess accumulation in the body is also harmful to our health. Now, Wilson disease is one of the major adverse effects which is caused by the excess accumulation of copper in our body. Now, the penicillamine is an artificial amino acid containing thiol group. Now, uh, this is the main structure of the, uh, of the penicillamine. 
So you see that uh, this is when S x is replaced by S, and this is called penicillamine. And when it is replaced by O, it is called theonine. And when it is replaced by Se, selenium, then it is called valine. Now the interesting thing is that the D penicillamine is used for the chelation process. When the excess accumulation of copper happens in our body, and then use different chelator to bind with the copper and excrete it from our body. Now, now D penicillamine is known as the excellent chelator, and it is used uh, for excretion of excess of copper ion from our human body. Now, D penicillamine D means the dextro levodopa. Uh, Dextrorotary and N means liver rotary. So, depending on the plane of progression, it is called. And the important thing is that the N conform of penicillin is toxic in nature, and thus the D conform is used in the chelation therapy for the treatment of Wilson disease. Now, the the idea is that the how this uh, this molecule bind with copper, and this is the main theme of this paper. And 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 the uh, and we see that uh, the the rotation of X H that means that this group produces three structures say A B and C and now the C double H group that acid group I mean C double H group and then the uh, rotation of this C double H group uh, gives the another six structure this is uh, position of X is same but the position of C double H group is different. For for this and this, so H is here and H is here, and for the B conformer, the position of X is here, not is different. And from this case, we have also two structure, this one and this one. And for C conformer, when X position is this, it is different from the other, and we we'll get um, also the two structure. So total a number of uh, six structures we have, and and this the copper can bind with this conformer in. Uh, In forty different ways, and there are some called is bidentate, where two atoms are involved for the binding process, and where three atoms are involved for the binding process, and this is called the tridentate manner. So it it can bind with copper either tridentate manner, bidentate manner, or the tridentate manner. Where, for example, here N O N S is involved. O one is mean this one, this one. N is this, and this is for X for H, O, and uh, S. E. So there are uh, this is for penicillin, where uh, uh, X is replaced by S, and there are uh, bidentate manner and tridentate manner. The both ways the, the copper can bind with the penicillin, and, and this is the, uh, the program we used. The basis set is M zero six L. Sorry, method is M zero six L, and basis set is. Six three one one plus plus GDP, and for copper this is land L two digit, and for uh, 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 for the solution, so use uh, use conductor like uh, con conductor like spinning solution model, and for uh, bonding analysis we use AIM. The AIM theory developed by Beta is a powerful one for uh, you know that analyzing the molecular structure, and this method identifies the coordinates of a particular type of solid point. The electron density distribution and which is known as the bond critical point or BCP. Now the relative energies uh, of the conformers and this is on thionine and X is replaced by O and this is for penicillin and X is replaced by S as I told in my earlier slide. When when this is S, then called penicillin and this is when this is O, this is called thionine and this is C and then this is called valine. Now, now all this, uh, uh, all this uh, uh, conformer is here, and both in gas phase and and aqueous phases, and we see that the relative energy difference among the conformers for thionine, penicillin, and valine are are very small. So uh, all conformers are equal in participant uh, in the chelation process. Now, the respective, if you calculate the rest by binding energies, uh, you see that the uh, the binding modes I mean. And that we have the both bidentic manner. This is all bidentic, and then we have tridentic manner. This and this, and it is true for thionine, penicillin, and valine. Now uh, this is uh, this is all the conformers you have. This is the bidentic and 
and this is the tridentate complex. When uh, N, this is the copper, and this is the oxygen, and this is the sulfur, and this is N. So three, uh, three atom is uh, involved uh, uh, in the binding process, and then it is called the tridentate complex. And this is called the bidentate complex when N and O is involved in the binding process with the copper. Now we have calculated the relative energies. Uh, we see that the tridentate complex is more stable than the bidentate complex. And in the tridentate complex, and this N O one and N O one and S is more stable than the others. That means this is N, this is O one. And this is S. So N, O1, and S are more S means, and this is for penicillamine. And and you see that uh, that the tridentate complex are uh, more stable than the bidentate complex. Among the tridentate complex, in O1 above O, O means uh, uh, means are more uh, more stable uh, for thionine, and and for penicillamine, this is N, O, and S. O1 and S and other is N1, NO2 and other oxygen is more stable. This one is more stable than other. And we have also calculated the MIA, that is metal ion affinity. And we see that for this case also, uh, for the tridentate complex, the metal ion affinity is more than the bidentate complex. Now, for all three amino acids, the tridentate complex has the highest maximum stability as well as its maximum MI, MIA, metal ion affinity values. The complexes where O1 is participated at greater energy than the complexes where O2 is involved in the binding process. As it is evident that the CO2 plus has greater affinity for O1 donor center. Aqueous phase uh, complexes are formed, and the binding energy we have calculated uh, using the first and second hydration scale model. And we have calculated the binding energy for uh, thionine, penicillamine, and valine. And we see that uh, the, the maximum binding energy is for the tridentate complexes, and it increases from thionine to penicillamine and then valine. And, and this is uh, also true for, uh, for the other. Uh, other uh, complexes also, and this is the all possible binding modes, and 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 the binding energy uh, uh, values are listed here for for in short in in both use we use the both uh, model uh, for for water at one is PCM polarized continuum model and also use the Cosmo model conductor light solvation model, and we see that the binding energy for uh, for the tridentate complexes uh, is 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 greater than the bidentate complex and it is true for all for penicillamine and valine and others and it is interesting to note that the, when it is in, in a solution and there is a possibility of forming a deuter ion so we also calculated uh, the the deuter ionic uh, complexes and also the binding energy for thionine penicillamine and valine and in that case also you see that the uh, for penicillamine also the, the binding energy and for vanil and it is uh, higher and, and, and for the other cases also. So for for each of L2 bond, the, the, the bonding uh, uh, analysis, so uh, this value is found to be low and positive, which is the characteristic of the close state interaction. For penicillin and vanil complexes, the delta square row values for this, these and bonds are uh, greater for NCO2 or OCO2 uh, plus, CU plus, 2 plus bonds are greater. Than, uh, uh, than penicillamine and valine. The thionine, uh, for thionine, uh, this value of this bond is almost same as the O and Cu2 class and better than the NCU2 and OCU2 bonds. For all complexes, and LC2 class bonds are considered as the medium stem uh, for each of this one. And as the criteria is this one satisfied and all two bonds, we are partially covering the nature. Now, in summary, the relative energy difference among the conformers of all three artificial amino acids is small enough, which uh, allows the presence of all conformers, as I told, all are uh, equally probable to, uh, uh, to appear in the 
uh, in the binding process and it is important that a particular binding mode can be obtained from different conformers with different VU, a V value, binding energy values. And the observation uh, from all three models clearly established that the tridentate complex is most stable as the binding energy is maximum. In gas phase, the complexes where O1 is participated have greater MI value than the complexes where O2 is involved in the binding, which clearly established greater affinity of O1 donor center than O2. And this fact is also true for the uh, first and second hydration square model. The effect of side chain is, uh, substitution is a prominent for all three artificial amino acids. And in all three models, the BE of the complex increases from uh, theonine uh, to penicillamine and then halin. Now, uh, by conformal analysis via, via XH and uh, C, uh, the acid group rotations, uh, we have um, identified a total six conformers uh, that can coordinate with both bidentate and tridentate manner. The uh, energy differences among the conformers are significantly low to, low to allow uh, their presence with equal um, preference in both gas and aqueous phases. The result of side chain substitution of O to uh, S and SE uh, is clearly reflected uh, on the uh, metal ion affinity values. The MIO values increases from theonine to penicillamine and then venin compounds, as you see in the table. The <coughs> metal ion affinity of S and SE minus ends, so the central uh, C2 plus metal ion is greater than that of the SH, uh, means the penicillamine and halinines. Now we uh, uh, the, we have chosen uh, another part, uh, 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 this one, the chosen C2 as the central metal line to investigate the binding phenomena with d penicillamine theonine and, and halin, and analogous to theonine cysteine and uh, halin respectively. A bit, a conformal analysis has been done to identify the possible conformer appropriate for binding in both bidentate and uh, uh, tridentate manner. And the stability of copper amino acid complex in gas phase has been determined by calculating the uh, relative energy of complexes along with the determination of metal and affinity. And moreover, we have analyzed the complete binding features in aqueous phases by considering the first and second hydration sphere and which facilitates the oral discussion in more realistic manner. Now, we mm, now go to the, uh, there is a possibility uh, that there is a multiple binding uh, of the uh, amino acid with of our uh, complexes and, and the chelation phenomena with uh, two, uh, two deuterating analogs of the same amino acid with copper 2 plus by substituting four molecular H2 has been investigated and we have also investigated the binding ability of uh, three deuterating analogs with CO2 by replacing all coordinated and further we have investigated the protonon affinity uh, of the uh, deprotonated uh, amino acid analogs for CO2 plus by uh, deprotoning all the three uh, uh, amino acid, penicillamine and saline donor center and, and this is the, the nomenclature and, and this is the two, uh, I will not go into the detail, uh, this is a little bit complicated and you will see that uh, there is two conformers C and trans and, 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 and it depends on the uh, which way the, uh, uh, the, the amino acid binds with copper and, uh, and then, then the, 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 uh, way, uh, the previous way we have six, uh, five conformers and uh, for the uh, bidentate complex and for the uh, uh, diamino complexes and also for the triamino complexes and uh, it is the computational details and by which we can calculate uh, and the, uh, uh, the the binding energy and uh, the protonated and and, and, and deprotonated form and uh, this is the optimized dimensions of uh, triamino complex and diamino complexes and uh, the, the optimized dimensions as before uh, for diamino and uh, tri amino complexes and and this is the uh, the binding energy uh, we, we see that the for uh, di amino complexes for a b and c conformer as we uh, uh, told earlier and then the how b and c uh, and b and c conformer appears uh, in the rotation uh, of the <coughs> this one uh, rotation of the uh, c double acid group and the same way we did this one and calculate the binding energy and, and uh, we see that the, the, the binding energy as it changes uh, from uh, this value and the C conformer is again uh, the, the highest one with the binding energy among the this one, the greater than that one. And for uh, 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 for the uh, another uh, uh, diamino and uh, triamino complexes, and this is the binding energy and, and successive binding energy also calculated. 
and and you see that the the uh, the in, in this case uh, it is a little bit uh, uh, diverse uh, 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 that the by uh, by uh, by uh, uh, complex is more uh, binding energy than the uh, diamond complex in C conformal as in the previous one the C is greater binding energy than the D one but it is little bit reversed or the multiple uh, binding is, uh, is is considered and uh, and in the multiple uh, binding mode, uh, uh, all deuteronomic form and C amenosis by replacing a total of four and six molecules of water of the hexagonated Cu2 plus complex, considering the bulk aqueous medium. The most of the cases, all C amenosis, both in bi as well as tri amenosis complexes, are distorted tetrahedral structure. For bi and di amino complexes, so uh, C double bind uh, thionine complexes acquire greater stability than over the B complex, whereas for the penicillin and anvarine complexes, the stability gets reversed. And for diamino complexes, generally stance complexes are more stable than the six complex, uh, cis complexes. And, and now we uh, go over to the uh, another uh, biological problem. This little reduced than that one. And this the, the this is the previous problem we, uh, a bit earlier. And after that, we came with the, the, the earlier one. And uh, this is uh, the calcium metals are useful. Uh, as we know, they are for their chelation, uh, sorry, chameleon like behavior, as they can adopt a wide variety of coordination numbers, geometries, and oxidative states. And understanding the nature of binding phenomena of calcium metal ions with biomolecules and associated ligands is an imperative area of research because the complex are found to improve important application in biology as well as toxicological chemistry. And calcium metal ions are essential trace elements for human body present in various enzymes. And homogeneous, and it, it, here also we have uh, see the, how uh, the 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 dimensional metal binds with with three uh, hemarket to propionic acid, and we see that the, here also the bidentate and tridentate complex is also formed, and in addition to that, uh, quadrantate complex is another possibility to form in this complex. The the the, the toxicity of the metal ions can be annihilated by chelation, as I told, with some specific ligands. Like natural and artificial amino acid and various uh, my, uh, migrated ligands, uh, and 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 alkali zine, and the cadmium is a, a potent carcinogen in in rodents and has also been accepted as a category one human carcinogen. And acute exposure to cadmium fumes may cause the flu-like symptoms referred to as a cadmium blues. And cadmium dust causes a respiratory tract and kidney problems. And uh, cadmium exposure to is also associated with the development of kidney stones. And there is a poisoning of mercury also. You know that the, the is a well-known disease called Minamata disease in Japan. It comes from the fish uh, of the sea. Uh, nearby there is a, a mercury producing factory. And from factory the, the waste is goes to the sea. And the people staying nearby will eat that uh, fish and and uh, poison with mercury, and this is called uh, the Minamata disease. And the other disease due to mercury are muscle weakness, skin rashes, anxiety, memory loss, trouble speaking, hearing, and seeing. And and zinc, uh, there are some uh, effect of zinc in our body and in intake of excess zinc and causes uh, nausea, vomiting, and pain, cramp, and diarrhea. And the cytotoxicity of gene 2 plus involves, involves in uh, involved disruption of cellular zinc uh, hemodesis and leading to uh, lysosomal and mitochondrial damage and ultimately cell death. And organic molecule from complex set that affects the metal ions behavior on a very large scale, especially by uh, changing the toxicity, variability, mobility, and harmful presence and certain. Heavy metals is thus controlled by the complexion. Uh, okay, just a minute, please. Hello? Hello? Uh, hello? Okay, sorry. Uh, uh, now uh, we use the uh, uh, three micro, uh, micro to acid. Uh, uh, is a molecule that is absorbent that is absorbent uh, in 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 acoustic and marine environment 
and it is found to coordinate effectively with the cadmium ions and resulting in formation of stable complexes. And, and there are uh, uh, important works, Vaidobo uh, Murthy um, uh, is also investigated the structure of cadmium and uh, three marcaptopropionic acid complexes uh, using electrospray mass spectroscopy. And there is experimental part and there is a, uh, a theoretical part also and, and the theoretical approach interpretation of all possible structures of the complexes through all possible coordination modes of complexes and determination of the stability of these complexes by examining their binding energies and metal abilities and detailed analysis of bond interaction of the complexes and influence of influence of water as a solvent on the complexation process. Now, detoxification of group uh, 2 metal ions uh, through complexation and provide insight into the mechanism of complex formation and binding of calcium metals with uh, hydrophobic thiol groups which, uh, which are an integral part of many biological systems uh, leading to the detoxification of metal and, and this is the three, uh, how uh, three market tropical propionic acid um, interact uh, with this one. And uh, we see that uh, this is the structure of the three market propionic acid. And this is uh, the, the deprotonated form, and this is the partial propionated form. And uh, in, uh, in OA, and we see that the, how metal bind with this one. When it bind with the two oxygen, and this is called the bidentic complex, as I told uh, before. And, and if it is, uh, it, uh, and in all these cases, we see that the, the bi bidentic complex is formed, but in that case, only sulfur is uh, bind with the metal ion. And, and we have calculated also the, the binding energy and metal ion affinities. And we see that uh, the, the bidentic complex uh, is, is, is more stable. And in all bidentic complex, uh, we see that the, where S and O is participate in the binding process, and this is uh, more complex and for, for it is true for zinc, cadmium and mercury and we also see the, the, uh, the metal ion affinity and it is, uh, uh, it is a maximum for, uh, for NPA and, and, and for the other complexes and uh, we also the, uh, see the how uh, two market to propionic acid binds to the metal ion and this is, this is the bidentic fashion and this is the tridentic fashion when Two uh, market to propionic acid bind with the uh, metal ion, and there are uh, uh, there are uh, three uh, two sulfur and one oxygen is involved, and this is the tridentate complex, and this is also the possible of uh, quadrantate complex here, uh, where uh, O S O N S is uh, also participate in the binding process, and we also calculated uh, the the uh, metal ion affinity values, and you see that the for quadrantate complex and the binding energy is, is, is maximum and, 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 and then uh, the tridentate complex and then the, uh, uh, then the bindentate complex and similarly for it is uh, zinc, cadmium and mercury and also if you uh, see the metal and affinity values you see that uh, for quadrantate complexes uh, this, uh, this the metal and affinity values is very metal and affinity values is uh, high and for uh, these complexes, uh, uh, we see that the SO species are found to be more stable than uh, this one. But in one market uh, propionic acid involved. And, and for other complexes, uh, OS is more stable than OO. That means two bidentic complex. But where sulfur and oxygen is involved, uh, this, the stability is more than the OO. And for uh, when two market to propionic acid is involved in the binding process, and this is the quadrantic complex OS and OS is more stable than SOA tridentic complexes, and, and and similarly for the uh, the, uh, the partially protonated form, and in these cases uh, 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 we see that the uh, uh, the binding uh, analysis of the bonding between the metal ions and the ligands reveal that the bonds are solely due to the charge transfer from the ligand atoms to the metal center, and that the interaction are electrostatic in nature. The metal cations can interact and coordinate with both a completely deprotonated and partially protonated trimarcaptopropionic acid molecule at different coordination sites from complexes. Uh, in coordinated with the uh, sulfonyl group, the metal ions uh, form six member ring which are more stable than the four member rings formed by the coordination of the metal ions uh, with the carboxyl group. Now, more charge is transferred from sulfur to the metal ion, metal cations. 
than that from uh, oxygen and uh, uh, metal sulfur bonds are stronger than metal oxygen bond in all cases uh, for the these uh, complexes and for both uh, uh, mpa and mph uh, uh, deprotonated and partially protonated form formation of cyclic structure formed by the metallization involving the sulfuryl group is the most preferred mode of complexion the phenomena of bond formation in these complexes is a consequence of substantial modulation of the electronic charge density distribution on the atoms of the ligand molecule and the metal ions that take part in the coordination and methylation process. And in summary, uh, electronic structure of complexes formed by the uh, methylation of one and two partially protonated or completely deprotonated three marketopopoenic acid molecule with zinc, cadmium, and mercury in cations have been investigated. Among the complexes formed by the coordination of metal cations and one ligand molecule, Cyclic structure involving the bi coordination with the sulfuryl group are more, more stable. Uh, in the complexes formed by the coordination of metal ions and two ligand molecules, the tetra coordinated complexes having distorted tetrahedral geometries and involving the sulfuryl groups are the most stable one. And the metal ion affinity values reveal that the both MPA and MPAH molecule bind with the metal cations in its order, zinc then mercury and then cadmium and nature of coordination of the complexity remains same in the aqueous environment. Now we go to the last part of my talk uh, which is just we working just two three years. The formation of uh, uh, stable ionized complexes between uh, uh, coinage metal containing the halogen and moderately reactive molecules a DFT approach. Now uh, what is super halogen? Now we uh, uh, we have uh, we have uh, had uh, enormous large values of electron affinity, and the first Gustav and Volzirev first proposed theoretically this unusual molecular system having the generalized molecular formula N K K plus one N X K plus one. Or X is a halogen atom, and N is a main group or transition metal atom with the formal values K. Here, this concept is little. molecule which behaves like a halogen and, and, and this is called uh, the super halogen. The first experimental measurement of the vertical determinant energy of this ion using photoelectron spectra is done by Wang et al. And potentially, see, this is potentially strong oxidizing agent and super halogen chosen for our study are, are gold fluoride, tetrafluoride and gold hexafluoride. The charge of this Two is dictated primarily by the following reason: their structure simplicity of the system, and their strong ability to accept an excess electron due to high electron affinity. Because Ea of uh, gold tetrafluoride is 7.05 eV, and that of gold uh, hexafluoride is 8.72 eV. Now uh, we uh, now uh, they interact with uh, the moderately reactive molecule, and these are common moderately reactive molecule and those cell uh, neutral molecules. And expected to have moderately uh, reactivity or nearly chemically inert or exhibit large ionization potential. And this led us to six molecules, namely silicon dioxide, ammonia, water, carbon dioxide, chloroform, dichlorofluorothane, uh, 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 and which are both moderately reactive and difficult to ionize because their IP values span uh, over 10 to 14 electron volt range. And, and use uh, Gaussian Zernite uh, for this uh, program, uh, for this calculation I mean, this program. The molecular geometry is optimized using uh, uh, 06, in 06 and distributed methods in conjunction with SSD for gold, means uh, Stuttgart, Dresden, uh, effective core potential and 6311 plus plus GDP for the main group elements uh, uh, used for the basis set. And there is a structure, optimized structure of all. The, the left hand side is uh, um, gold tetrafluoride and right hand side is gold hexafluoride and, and the optimal structural complexes form between the super halogen and, and reactively moderately reactive molecules and this is the complexes form and the binding energy and the charge flow and, and we see that the, the, the binding energy is maximum when silicon interact with, uh, with uh, uh, F4, uh, I mean the gold tetrafluoride. And, and for sulfur and for hexafluoride, this is 99.65. And, and, and now, now the, for ammonia, it is uh, little decreases and water and 
is going to clear now. And this is the charge flow. This is charged on the uh, on the uh, 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 sulfur dioxide, and this is the spin density. And calculated parameters for this complex is formed between the super halogen and MR binding. This binding energy is uh, calculated in kilocalorie per mole. And and now the summary from the binding energy values. Uh, it is clear that almost in all cases, a strongly bound complexes are formed. And, and this is uh, charge is flowing from uh, uh, this to this, uh, this one to this, and sulfur is uh, partially, uh, partially positive, and, and uh, argon, uh, sorry, gold detector is partially negative. So this is a ionic complex, uh, mainly ionic complex is formed from the charge flow. Values and molecular spin density is calculated on MRI. The ionic nature of the complex is formed. It is observed that the complexion between complexion between A and sub, of superhalogen and IP or NADI is a key factor. Electron affinity of superhalogen and ionization potential of moderately reactive molecule is a key factor to predict the stability of the complex form. And this work will motivate to design stronger and experimentally synthesizable and superhalogens, which will be at capable of oxidizing molecule with very high IPs. Now the super alkali. Now the how to reduce uh, sulfur dioxide using super alkali, a theoretical perspective, and have a low value of uh, super. What is super alkali? Super alkali have, have low values of uh, ionization energy, even lower than the alkali metals. Uh, and Gustav and uh, Baldiria proposed this unusual molecular system theoretically with the generalist formula Y L M plus one. Where L is an electronegative atom with formal valence M. And A is, in, A is an alkali metal and act as a stronger uh, reducing agent. And the the sulfur dioxide is used uh, for the, it is a toxic gas with burnt match smell. Uh, one of the major precursor of to acid rain, and affects human health when breathing, and difficult to reduce due to low electron uh, affinity. And thus, we have uh, explored the we mentioned super alkalis for the reduction of sulfur dioxide to lower this am amount in the uh, atmosphere. And here also uh, Gaussian zirconium is used. And for molecular uh, optimizing different method and in conjunction with CCTV TJ. And this is the structure uh, we have uh, optimized for, for uh, super alkali and SO2 complexes. And, uh, and, and the bond length is given in Amsterdam and shown in this figure. And, uh, and we have seen that uh, the, the, uh, the isomer is there uh, for uh, FLI2, uh, SO2, FOLI3, and NLI4. And this is the uh, this is the uh, stability, and and this is the binding energy for all, and this is the uh, charge on on sulfur dioxide, and and all uh, the complexes. And the the conclusion is that uh, from the high binding energy values, it is clear that in all cases, a strongly bound complexes are formed. And accumulation of nitrogen charge on SO2 confirm its reduction by. Uh, employed uh, super alkalis, then its charge is accumulated on the sulfur dioxide, and all are negative. We have seen that. And, and uh, localization of spin density on SO2 molecule further supports the fact that the electron transfer offer from uh, super alkali to SO2. Smaller super alkali is more efficient or effective in reducing SO2 than the higher ones. And this study provides a new strategy for the reduction of sulfur dioxide and motivate further research in this direction. Now the last part, uh, the theoretical uh, working with the Tata steel, or because the last uh, uh, last 15 years we uh, working with uh, uh, with different type of reaction, uh, starting from industry to environment, and also uh, in some uh, biological system. So we, uh, we we collaborate with Tata steel. And, uh, we will not go into detail because it is uh, under going on, and we are uh, time to time delivering our. Uh, output uh, to the Tata steel. The problem is that the theoretical exploration of catalytic and non-catalytic co-gasification reaction with carbon monoxide 
ওই 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 মডেল দেখো ইন ডিফারেন্ট ওয়ে and 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 see the uh, the we started it in uh, in uh, in the year 2018 and uh, we uh, we uh, the tata people came and and we we, we present their work in gamshetpur uh, also and then uh, we see that the, in the bus furnace in the gamshetpur tata still and there is some un- unwanted products which can be removed uh, by a suitable way but i mean the suitable catalysis we design and 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 this unwanted product can uh, hamper the growth of the steel and also the quality of steel so this is uh, necessary for them to remove it uh, from the uh, from the furnace and we also designed a um, few low cost catalysis by which uh, 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 this can be eliminated from the furnace and uh, the quality of steel is maintained and and this is one uh, going on and it is almost at the end of this uh, project and 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 we not going to detail because it is uh, the, the between our, uh, between my group and with tata steel and my student yeah so thank you for a very informative talk what you think kamal kamalika okay so uh, i got much time today uh, because i finished this little earlier right Okay, so uh, do you have any question? Then you can ask me. Yes. So there are certain questions uh, people mm. have given in the chat box. Mm. Some, some uh, Parag Agrawal has written, sir, how do you measure toxicity of any material? Mm, mm, I mean the 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 toxicity. You mean how no. any material? Okay, so. Uh, this is uh, this is uh, this is the the work I have done. Uh, it is uh, for the chelation process. How the metal and bind with the uh, with the artificial amino acid, right? Okay. So we have to calculate the the metal and affinity of these complexes. Okay. And the where for uh, for these complexes, you see that. The uh, we have calculated the metal ion affinity. Uh, so how it binds uh, with uh, uh, with the artificial amino acid, right? Uh, uh, do you understand my point? Parag, is it is it clear to you? Sir, means we have to calculate the F metal metal ion comp- complex affinity. Yes, metal ion affinity of the complex or artificial amino acid. Affinity means electron affinity. Yes. No, iron affinity. Iron affinity. Yes, metal iron. It is. I mean the copper two plus. How copper two plus bind with the artificial amino acid? So this yes. artificial amino acid is used as a chelation therapy. You understand my point? So if the affinity is high, it's toxic, or so no, no. affinity led to toxicity. No, no, no. Toxic copper iron is toxic. The excess copper iron is toxic to our body. The yes, problem sir. is that how to remove it from our body. Yes, sir. The removal process is called the chelation therapy. Right? Chelation therapy. Now, how this chelation process going on inside our body? This is the problem. Okay. So, how this metal ion bind with the artificial amino acid and excrete it from our body? This is the problem. Right? So, we see that the the tridentate complex where N O and O is involved in the binding process. the maximum stability as well as maximum that is mean they, they form more stable complex than the bidentate uh, manner to understand the uh, uh, yes the the stability is the opposite to that of the toxicity uh, if the complex is more stable it will be less complex less toxic yes it will then it will be excreted from our body It will be excreted from our body. Okay, yes, it is. The body will remove this complex from our body. Do you okay. understand my point? Because if it is uh, stable, it will not bind with the body. No, uh, it, it, this is the this is the formation of complex is unstable that it will not be excreted from our body. Okay, okay. Do you understand my point? Yes, sir. Yeah, this the binding. If the binding is more, then it will be excreted from our body. That is. The body will get rid of this complex now, but this, which is the binding, is not so strong. Then it will stay in our body and it produces harm to our body. Do you understand my point? Yes, sir. Okay. 
we will bind the toxic element to that particular uh, uh, IS artificial complex, yes. artificial complex so that yes. it will not bind to the body parts means yes. the yes. Yes. particular yes. proteins yes. or anything yeah. else yes this is uh, in fact this penicillin is used as a medicine in our body in in chelation therapy okay okay sir there is a one analysis qsar analysis for the toxic oh, yes yes uh, you can do it by qsar analysis huh? okay. you can do it also But uh, our approach is this way. Yes, sir. There is one more question. How to calculate? How did you calculate the MIA? Uh, okay, metal and affinity. Yes, sir. Uh, just you see that one. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, this sir. one, yeah. Do you see that one? Uh, just uh, optimize it. You put bond and then optimize the structure in mm -hmm. bidentate and tridentate manner, and you get the complex uh, stable structure. Uh, so we we get that in the DFT or uh, Gaussian output file. We we get the values of these uh, affinities. Oh uh, yes, sure. So you okay. get it. Okay. We just uh, make a bond and uh, uh, optimizes the structure or bidentate or or tridentate and and you and, and give the values. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. So next question, uh, Doctor Anita. Karup Karup Shami, she has written that uh, what software are you using for confirmer calculations? Okay, yeah, uh, it is used. Uh, it is uh, I use the whole the Gaussian program is used, no other program to optimize the confirmer. Yes. So, Doctor Anita, does it answer your question? If you have any follow-up question, you can ask. Unmute yourself and ask. Okay, uh, I don't think the C has any follow-up question or so. So, Dr. Mukesh Pandey has raised the hand. Dr. Mukesh Pandey, you can unmute and ask your question. Uh, thank you, Dr. Shukla. Mm. Uh, I like the Dr. Das presentation on detox detoxification mm. pathways. Uh, I have got a very small comment. In fact, mm. it is uh, uh, like this that. Uh, Uh, perhaps i feel that our old age uh, medic medicinal therapy which is mm. ayurveda mm -hmm. is based on your uh, detox detoxification pathways where we give some sort of uh, bhasmas and uh, some some ingredients like for example i have one um, uh, uh, one example people use this uh, copper based uh, uh, water means water cap overnight mm -hmm. copper vessel Probably mm. that has uh, some some uh, linkage with your uh, this uh, uh, theory of detoxification, as I uh, understand. Uh, What is yeah. your comment? Uh, the uh, I think the my my problem is mainly the uh, when the uh, excess copper, okay, is mm. is uh, 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 when the body uh, get excess uh, from uh, metabolic process or or in other way, uh, then yeah. this excess copper. Is हेलो हेलो यस डॉक्टर पांडे आई थिंक देयर इज सम नेटवर्क ग्लिच फ्रॉम हिज साइड या 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 देयर आर सर्टेन देयर आर सर्टेन इंसिडेंट्स लाइक फॉर एग्जांपल आवला एंड अदर सच काइंड ऑफ थिंग्स आर यूज्ड फॉर टू रिमूव द एक्सेस एक्सेस कॉपर आई मीन हां हां यस एक्सेस कॉपर आई मीन या या Thank you. So, yeah. so, if there is any other question, you can unmute and ask your question, or you can write in chat box. Is there any other question? Ah, uh, Ojit uh, sir, I have one question. This is Upal sir. Oh, I understand. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I recognize you. Huh? Uh, yeah. If you can comment on uh, mm -hmm. um, in the <clears throat> blast furnace process, uh, what mm -hmm. you have showed in your mm -hmm. last slide, mm -hmm. uh, what exactly can be done using DFT? Uh, uh, this is uh, we, we, uh, I will not go into detail. But just give you some hints. Okay, so we model mm -hmm. uh, we we model the coke surface in different way. Okay, and and how uh, uh, CO is interact. I just come to that. Uh, okay, and 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 how CO two carbon dioxide 
is interact with the coke surface and produce some desired product and some undesired product. So you can model the coke surface in different way and uh, and and get the idea about the what is the desired product and what is the undesired or unwanted product, right? Okay. And from this one, if you get the unwanted product, then you have to think about the how to remove this unwanted product from the bus furnace. So we have to do. There is no other way to remove except we have to design the catalysis. So in uh, in, in company, the company people always uh, try to get the low cost catalyst rather than high cost catalyst, right? So uh, okay. this is uh, this is very effective for their production and price. Anyway, so uh, for uh, uh, for this problem, uh, so we design some low uh, low cost catalyst, and this uh, low cost catalyst can eliminate the unwanted or undesired product from the bus farms. Sir, uh, the uh, the unwanted product is basically in the gaseous state, right? Yes, uh, yes, in the gaseous state. Because uh, my doubt, my doubt was uh, basically. Suppose it is if it is coal, then it is basically uh, more or less uh, solid, and oh, yes. <coughs> your catalyst will not uh, go inside the solid things. And no, no, no. It is it is it is, it is mainly, mainly in the gaseous space. So yes. you, uh, there, there is another project to start after that uh, that you have to some solid also. Okay, so at this okay. stage, fine. The initial part is uh, the gaseous space, and we have to remove that one, right? So this is the okay. first part of the project. No. Thank you, sir. Hmm. Well, is there any other question? Okay. So no question, sir. Uh, uh, just say uh, one query: the yes, binding energy and the interaction energy we have shown, whether they are jetty corrected or just the total energy. Uh, I, uh, 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 it's a binding energy. I mean, uh, binding and interaction energy. Uh -huh. Are whether ZP corrected, zero point energy corrected, or just the total energy? Uh, I think, uh, I think this is uh, total energy. As I remember, I have to check that one. Okay. Oh, okay. So, no. Okay. I have to check that one. That, that, that is not actually a question. Just a question. Uh, no, no, yes, yes. No, no, no. This is okay. So, so now. Uh, I invite the chairman of the workshop and the head of the department, Professor B. Indrajit Sharma, to formally propose the vote of thanks for the. Uh, thank you, uh, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor Shukla, for giving this opportunity. Uh, actually, Professor Abhijit K. Das has given a wonderful lectures in two parts, and he has covered mainly uh, application of density functional theory. Uh, to structure optimization, spectroscopy, and uh, reaction mechanism. So wonderfully into lectures, he has covered almost, and this is a wonderful lecture. I hope all participants has benefited, and uh, there was a lot of interesting, interesting question and answer session. So all participants have enjoyed the lectures, sir. I am very thankful to you on behalf of the organizing committee. For your wonderful lecture, I also look forward your physical presence in our department in uh, near future. And God bless you for your good health, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. thank you very much. <laughs> okay, if, if if I get on, then I will go again to see George. Yes, okay. yes. Thank you very much. Sure. Thank you, sure. Sir. Sure. Okay, thank you. So now participants, so we conclude here this session today and tomorrow we will reassemble again at uh, 1.45. The lecture will be starting at 2. So uh, the first lecture will be given by Dr. Uh, Abhishek Misra. So you can you can discuss your uh, remaining questions of today, tomorrow by joining 1.45 p.m. Lecture will be starting at 2, but discussion can carry on before. Yeah, thank you very much. Dr. Pandey, again, you have any question? You have raised your hand? Okay. Yes, so, yes, 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 yes. Yes, uh, yes. Sorry, I could not unmute my mic and I started speaking. Very, very sorry for that. No, no, I'm, no. Uh, uh, what I'm seeing is that in your uh, schedule, the first lecture seems to be by Professor Jha. Is it the, is it, has it been rescheduled? 
no 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 sorry 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 funny sorry for uh, thank you for correcting us actually it is it is the first lecture will be by professor prafulla jha and the second lecture will be given by and uh, dr misra yeah thank you thank you very much for oh, no problem no problem <laughs> no. I, actually I, it was in my mind that avishek will speak so yeah. Yeah, yeah thank you thank you very much yeah. and thank you all let us meet uh, tomorrow so those who are here just uh, i want to add one thing that uh, tomorrow's uh, this uh, validatory function may continue for some more time so it is 5:15 actually 5:15 to 5:13 it may last 5:45 yeah thank you everyone